Black Bear Nation, I'm President Joan Farini Mundy, and I am delighted to be the first to welcome you all to our 2020 Virtual Homecoming Game Day, presented by Bangor Savings Bank. Although we are missing the historic traditions and tremendous atmosphere of our game days at Alphonse Stadium, we hope you're able to bring the excitement of homecoming to your own safe at home celebrations. Please enjoy today's 2018 homecoming game and make sure to stick around at halftime for a special presentation from our Pride of Black Bear Marching Band. Thank you. Hey, Black Bear Nation, Jamil Demby here, offensive lineman with the Los Angeles Rams. And I'd like to be the first one to officially welcome you to our virtual homecoming tailgate party presented by Orono Brewing Company. We all know how special homecoming weekend is in Orono and we're missing game day on campus, but I hope you're all able to take some time today to enjoy your own special celebrations and at home tailgate events. Happy homecoming Black Bear fans. Have fun today and stay safe. Well, welcome to Coffee Talk here with Coach Nick Charlton at the University of Maine as we celebrate virtual homecoming. Rich Kimball, Bob Lucy, Coffee Talk brought to you by Duncan. Black Bear football runs on Duncan and Bob, the search for the best coffee in college football has brought us right back home. It has, Rich, and this is a great setting, a great setting to celebrate Duncan coffee. And to celebrate homecoming, it's a beautiful day for practice and Coach Nick Charlton, how great is it to be back out there with the guys? This is, it's pretty awesome. You know, it's been a long time. I was telling the team, we, we started last Thursday. It's been 321 days since we practiced last. And for all of our guys, um, I just told them, have fun, have fun. And now we're kind of getting to the point after practice three where it's going to really start to be about execution. And now we kind of know the routine. But honestly, it's just been a lot of fun to see the guys running around and play football. Well, I have to think, too, with dealing with all of these protocols and everything that's been going on really since uh, spring football was canceled. Has this brought you guys together even more so as a team? I mean, it literally has. You know, if you think about it with what we were doing in terms of the pods and, and trying to keep guys separated and, and doing all the right things in terms of the protocols, uh, we have some guys on this team that just met each other uh, three days ago because they had never gone against each other and they had never participated with anything with each other. And uh, we have guys who are really getting to know each other now. So it's cool. It, it's a lot of fun. And this is the time where we can kind of grow as a team. Hey, Bob, you and I have talked about this in the offseason. We kind of keep track of the, the comings and goings as best we can. And we've been very impressed with the group of new Black Bears that have joined this team since last time. Yeah, I think Nick and the coaching staff have done an excellent job recruiting in difficult times. And they've got 37 new players, uh, a nice blend, I think, of proven playmakers, if you will, and promising newcomers. And I'm really excited to see this group in action, hopefully in the spring. Nick, how did you feel about your recruiting class as well as those transfers you brought in? Felt really good about it coming out of uh, signing day. You know, naturally, I didn't, I didn't predict that we were going to go to pandemic mode afterwards. But we, uh, we were. It actually created an opportunity to keep up with them more than we normally do. Um, so we met with them on Zoom throughout the summer, and we had to bring them in a little bit later, of course. But uh, with the transfers, it's really about fit for us. You know, naturally, you have to be talented, but. It's all about the fit, making it in our culture, being a good team guy. And we feel like we have a really great group of them. And then with our freshmen, these are great young men that are really good students. And honestly, they, they just want to learn and play football. So uh, I've been very impressed with them dealing with this because, I mean, even just something subtle like this, is, it's a lot for an 18-year-old to have to adjust to, and they've done well. How's the leadership of this team? Who are the guys that you'll look to, to to be in charge this year? Well, naturally, I mean, there's a group of guys um, that have played a lot of football here um, that are a little bit older. And, you know, we don't have as many seniors um, as we have in the past, but, but we actually look at it like a good thing because we have so many younger players that have played a lot. And, you know, naturally the names, I mean, Deshaun Stevens is the big one. He's back, been practicing uh, full speed and full go. So he's been great. Liam Dobson. Um, of course, Andre Miller, guys like that. So we're expanding that leadership group, and we, we have our unit leaders, we call them, which is a group of about nine guys um, that I meet with uh, every couple of weeks. And uh, really, those three stick out right at the moment. But we're waiting on captains and things like that. But, but there's certainly some leadership on the team. Now, you, you look forward to hopefully a, a spring season. That's going to be a, largely a conference schedule. But uh, how much does that mean to these guys who missed out here in the fall season to have that to look forward to starting in March? Well, it's, it, I mean, it's the carrot at the end of the, the road, you know, and it's hard to, to go through this process. You know, college football, especially Division One college football, it's a job. 
And so for these guys, we're asking them to come out and practice and work out and do everything every day. We're a morning operation, so these guys are up pretty early. Uh, today was a holiday, so we got to start a little bit later, which was nice. You could, you could feel the energy off of that. But um, I definitely think it, it, it matters what we're doing with the schedule and then also with what the, the, the guys are doing going through the process. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with where we're at right now. With all the changes and everything that we've gone through here in the last six, seven months, uh, how great is it for you to bring your staff back intact? It's, it's been big, you know, honestly. I, I think it was something that's kind of underrated, um, you know, because we haven't had too many staffs that have been able to stay whole throughout the whole process. So really to bring everybody back was really important throughout this because, I mean, you're bringing in a new coach and you're on Zoom and you're not allowed into the office, you know, that's tough. And so naturally we were very lucky to retain everybody. And, and really, you know, when we meet as a staff and we put plans together and things like that, everybody knows this place now and they know kind of the intricacies of it. So we can really react and just go, which is great. How's this changed recruiting for you and the staff? Uh, it's changed. So, you know, we have a dead period through December 31st. I wouldn't be surprised if it keeps going. Um, but for us, it's all virtual. We keep up with these guys on FaceTime, telephone, and then, of course, on Zoom. And so we've done all these virtual tours with them and uh, really just trying to stay in contact over and over again. You know, some of them are playing, some of them are not. You know, it's a real mix. So uh, it certainly has affected that. And then not to mention the scholarship numbers that we're going to have to look at because everybody keeps their eligibility. But um, right now we have three commits, and that, that's a good amount for us at this point right now. And I think that number is going to grow. But we only have X amount of scholarships, so uh, it's going to be a different year that way. Great news last week with the announcement of the money coming to the University of Maine, specifically to the athletic department from the Alphonse Foundation. What's the message that sends not only to the coaching staff, but to Black Bears now and future Black Bears? Well, I mean, it's huge, you know, certainly that, not to mention the fact that, that that's a lot of money. So, you know, I think that um, it's going to help everybody here in the department. But, you know, in terms of football, it's critical. I mean, we're playing at the highest level of the FCS and um, it's super competitive and we're trying to build a consistent winner here. And that's a big part of it is having facilities, is being you know able to have infrastructure and things like that. And um, I think the guys deserve it. I'm, I'm so grateful to the Alphonse and everything they've done for us over the years. I mean, just learning, learning about what the Alphonse Foundation meant to us and then uh, going through that process was big for us, honestly. Well, in just a few minutes, we're going to watch the homecoming game from two years ago as the Black Bears take on Albany. Bob Lucy, what are some of the numbers from that main Albany game? Well, Maine outgained Albany 360 yards to 113. Maine had 11 tackles for a loss, including five sacks. Kayon Whitaker himself had three sacks. Ernest Edwards with a 77-yard touchdown catch. Chris Ferguson had a good game, 21 of 30 for 244 yards. And it was just a good team effort, really. Uh, Quan Blair had five catches in the game. And Darius Hart had seven tackles and an interception. And Maine did what they had to do to win. They got out of the gates early, got some momentum, and just took it to Albany. Albany averaged 1.9 yards per play in that game. And as offensive coordinator then, Coach, what do you remember most about it? Uh, first play of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, we thought we had a, uh, a good play into a good look. You know, there was a little bit of a tendency there. Uh, that, that we wanted to attack, and I, I remember joking with uh, with Ferg before, and he said, "You know, you really." He, had, he was like, "You really think this is going to work?" And I'm like, "Just believe that it's going to work, man. I'm telling you, that's what they're going to do." And uh, I was in the box at the time, and once we saw it, we were like, "All right, it's going to it's going to score now." And uh, you know, ultimately, it's about players. So, you know, trying to put guys like Ernest in good positions, and uh, that game. The other thing I remember offensively was just uh, Andre Miller starting to come on. That was really kind of uh, you know his coming out party. Uh, towards the end of the year and his beginning of like being a huge addition to this team. Uh, but I mean, honestly, it was the defensive effort. You know, I thought we came out the gates pretty fast and uh, just our defense was relentless. Um, I think they knocked the quarterback out of the game early. Uh, so that was the first game the young guy played uh, under Cuffler. But our defense was just the, the hard soul of that team and was relentless. And, you know, you play great defense, you're going to win a lot of games. So uh, that was a lot of fun, that one. Well, I hope it turns out the same when we watch it again today. I, I plan on it. I plan on watching it. <laughs> and Nick, uh, good luck with the rest of your practice season. We look forward to seeing the Black Bears out here for real, hopefully come March. I'm excited. I appreciate it, Rich. All right. Thanks, Nick. Uh, for Bob Lucy, I'm Rich Kimball. This has been Coffee Talk, brought to you by Duncan. Black Bear football runs on Duncan.
For more than 168 years, Bangor Savings Bank has stood by its employees, customers, and communities. And we're not stopping now. We will be here for you. Today, and every day ahead. Do you know your main dairy farmers? Chances are we're a lot like you. We are parents, grandparents. We are small business owners. We are a part of our communities. We are your neighbors. We are undeniably dairy. There's still time left in this year's building season, and Hammond Lumber Company is here to help. From free estimating and planning, to design and drafting services, and a wide variety of products, as well as complete home and garage packages, Hammond showrooms are open with CDC-recommended procedures in place. Or browse online and place your order by phone. Delivery is free within striking distance of any Hammond location statewide. Keep your project on schedule with help from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Happy homecoming, Black Bear Nation. It is time for Main Memories, brought to you by Lead Betters. I'm Brian Sullivan, joined alongside nine-year NFL veteran Mike DeVito and an all-time Black Bear great. Mike, thanks for joining us here on the sidelines. Brian, thanks for having me, man. This is great. Yeah, it's uh, it's as good as it can be. Yes, you right. Know? That's right. So we're on campus. we got our masks on, but we're still going to take some time to look back at homecoming because there's some great memories over the years. Uh, so I'd ask, I'd ask you, what are some of the your fondest memories of, of homecoming? You know, they, homecoming is done so well over here, right? You have the tailgating and all the fans. I mean, it really is a fun experience. And I think one of the, the most fondest memories I've had of homecoming is, is having my family come up and get to share in that experience. Uh, and not only that, but really the unprecedented access they had to the sideline. So I remember one year coming off um, from a defensive play right over there on the sidelines and sitting down on the bench and coach comes over and he's getting us coached up on what we're doing. And all of a sudden my dad walks walks up to me on the bench and he slaps me on the pads and he's like you got to get out there and make a play and you know and in the moment I'm like okay I got it I got it and then I'm like wait a minute was that my dad on the sideline like yeah. he's right behind us you know so for for them to get to to be on the sidelines to be a part of the game and to get to go out there and play that game right in front of my family uh that was funny but also a really uh, a really cool memory to have and so something I look back on I'm like oh man that was that was a lot of fun I think the facilities crew actually talked about that exact instance and said <laughs> all right we gotta <laughs> if the Davino are getting onto the field we need to really kind of That's clamp right. this thing down uh, so over the years um what are some of your how did you guys fare on, on homecoming in your time here in yeah that's a good question you know i've been thinking about it and i i don't remember the exact wins and losses uh i i do remember that those years a lot of the years that i was I was playing we, we were right around 500 a lot of those years so i imagine we won some and we lost some uh and obviously that's frustrating but getting to go out to dinner with the family after the game and and whether it's in victory or defeat getting to, to celebrate the time together uh that was one of the things that always attracted me to maine uh, was the family atmosphere, the uh, the blue collar sort of uh, down to earth atmosphere that permeated across the board here. And so uh, I just enjoyed sharing in that experience, that climate with my family. And uh, uh, yeah, so wins or losses, it was just fun to, to enjoy the, those those uh, homecoming games. And you're somebody who would have been able to see Orno and I don't know how many homecomings, but as a recruit, a player, an NFL player, and then in your next life as uh, a dad who lives here in uh, the greater Bangor area, uh, how has it sort of evolved as you've taken homecoming in? You know what's been consistent is just how much fun the experience is. Yeah. Right? I mean, it really is. It, it's just, it, it's you, you come here for a regular game on Saturday, and obviously the crowd is great and everything's great, but there's something different about homecoming. And, and as, a, as a high school kid coming up on a recruiting trip and getting a chance to watch that, obviously you're looking at these guys and thinking how – how in the world do they do this in front of this big crowd and play in this fast game? You know, it's almost surreal to watch. And then you get to be a part of it and you get to experience that emotion, right? And running out onto the field and all the crowd cheering and recognizing you got this big game in front of you and getting to go out there under the lights or, or during the day and get to perform on that field. And then coming back as uh, you know, as an alumni and getting to watch the game. Now, but having played in the NFL, I watch this game sometimes like, man, why are they going so slow? You know, <laughs> but I guess, uh, I guess that's the nature of the game. But uh, 
But yeah, no, get, getting to, to come back and watch your team that you have so much pride in, that you know gave you the opportunity to play at the next level. And, and not only that, but gave me so many other opportunities in, in life. Uh, to come back and watch that team go out there and play, the sense of pride that you feel. And again, to be a part of that climate, that homecoming experience, it was just it's just uh, an incredible blessing. And one of the things that we're asking people to do is put out photos of your homecoming spread. So if you're tailgating, send us a picture on social media, slap a Black Bear Nation hashtag on that, main memories, things like that, anything. Homecoming 2020, uh, let us know what you're doing. So I guess, Mike, I, I'd leave you uh, with this final question. Now that you are a tailgater, what do you provide? What's the key addition to the DeVito tailgate that if maybe if you're joining one that you need to bring along? Yeah, you know what? I would have your regulars, but I'm going to go back to my college mindset okay. here. So in college, you're always trying to gain weight, right? Especially being a lineman, you're always trying to gain weight. And so that allows you to justify eating anything. And so I remember everything I ate got dipped in blue cheese. <laughs> so I would go ahead and have the regular spread, the steak and cheese, the pizza, the, the burgers, all that but different spreads of ranch, blue trees, dressing, all, and dip it in there. So just add that extra flavor to the, to the <laughs> meal. I, would, I wouldn't worry about the calories, you know, maybe fast the next day or something, but that home, especially that homecoming tailgate, man, you gotta have those, those sides, those condiments <laughs> to go with all that good food. So you're showing up at a tailgate and you're only bringing condiments, that's it, just, just blue cheese. Well, so yeah. well, no, yeah, well, yeah, that's right, exactly. <laughs> Everybody else here is gonna have all the good food, <laughs> okay, but yeah, yeah no, sure. I'm gonna bring the pizza and all that, <laughs> okay, the steak good. and cheese. Uh, and there's no judgment, right? You can't judge me, right? If I'm dipping it in blue cheese, yep, I want sure. you to come out there, Brian, and say, come yeah, on, man. Yeah, that's fine. You're and you can have your own thing. Old. You can double dip it. That's fine. That's, that's your, oh, you that's got to double Mike. dip it. And yeah. you don't even get your own thing. We double dip in the same. This is college, man. Yeah. College. <laughs> yeah. This is college homecoming. You see, we double yeah. dip in the same dip. Yep, it was a whole different time. No that's holds exactly barred. That's exactly right. All right, Mike, no thank judgment. you very much for joining us here on the sideline. This has been Main Memories, brought to you by Ledbetters. What motivates us at Casella? I want to help our customers recycle as much as possible. Because I care about the environment and how our company impacts our towns. And at Casella Organics, we find new uses for all sorts of materials. It's hard work. But I'm helping people every day. And that makes me feel like part of the community. A community I care about. So I do everything I can to sustain the resources of our environment. Casella, dependable, caring people, part of your community. The best way I could describe working with Ham and Lumber, our relationship, is like working with a group of friends. Their service is excellent in the store. Uh, you walk in, there's always somebody there waiting to help you. Delivery, on-site help, whatever is needed, they're there for us. Aggressive on the pricing, they have all the materials and products we need. Their sales service is exceptional. They deliver everything when we expect it to be delivered. It always comes back to service, with Ham and Lumber being the most important thing. Out here, if you have the will, you can lead the way with the all-new Fisher Easy V V-Plow. Purpose-built to provide industry-leading features, performance, and efficiency, just like the other V-Plows in our lineup, but in a lightweight design that's ideal for businesses and homeowners using half-ton trucks. A strong yet versatile plow that handles the work and won't back down. The all-new Fisher Easy V V-Plow, built for Fisher Nation. For more information, visit fisherplows.com. Hi everybody, Ken Ralph, Director of Athletics at the University of Maine, and I'd like to welcome you to Homecoming. Looks a little different today, just like everything else in 2020, but we're going to do our best to enjoy ourselves and celebrate what's so special about the University of Maine. I know a lot of you are missing out on your traditional favorite homecoming activities, uh, whether it's a class dinner or the craft fair, or everybody's favorite homecoming activity, which is standing in the rain at the tailgate complaining about how few bathrooms we have. But you know what? We're going to find a way to get this done. We're going to try to find a way to have some fun. We should be out here beating Villanova right now and celebrating what's great about being a black bear. But we're going to find new ways to celebrate in 2020. And we're going to come back better than ever. You can't take away the excitement from our students, though. Right now, all our teams are here and they're practicing, trying to get ready for a season they hope is coming here later in the year. Our teams are with their coaches. They've just elevated up to their next round of practice uh, uh, permission here. And that's something that's really exciting. They're doing their strength and conditioning. They're in with their sports medicine professionals, doing their rehab, and they are getting ready. They want to take the field, and they want to compete, and they want to showcase what's best about Division I sports in Maine. And that's your UMaine Black Bears. And there's no shortage of excitement here within the department or on our campus. 
as I think everybody knows, the Harold Alphon Foundation awarded us a historic grant, $90 million for Black Bear Athletics. You know, you could go your entire life and never see a number like that. And I can tell you right now that everybody in this department is doing cartwheels and they're so excited about the future of Black Bear Athletics. This $90 million grant, a legacy of Harold Alfond, who for so many years has, has been a benefactor of Black Bear Athletics, is gonna go towards really improving our facility infrastructure here on the Orono campus. You're gonna see some new facilities, you're gonna see some refurbished facilities, and you're gonna see improvements for all 17 of our varsity sports. You're also gonna see uh, facilities that will assist us in supporting our recreational sport programs, such as club sports and intramurals. And you're going to see a real big effort made to rectify some of the gender equity issues we've had in the past. We're excited about the future of Black Bear Athletics. 2020 may be a very different homecoming, but it's an exciting homecoming for all of us because we can see how bright the future is. Hopefully you can see it as well. Stay safe, everyone. Enjoy your homecoming and let's go Black Bears. Happy homecoming, Black Bear Nation. It's a rainy day out there. It's not the worst day to be having a virtual homecoming, um, but we're all excited that you're joining us for our first virtual homecoming ever during this interesting time during the COVID pandemic. You know, what a great time to be a Mainer and to be a Black Bear. The last couple of weeks, I'm sure you've all heard, the Harold Alfon Foundation announced a $500 million grant to various institutions in the state of Maine, including $240 million to the University of Maine system, with $90 million of that earmarked to support facility improvements at the University of Maine Athletic Program. It's such an exciting time to be a Black Bear. We couldn't be prouder to be here and to have the support of the Harold Alfon Foundation and all the donors like you. In the coming weeks, when Ken rolls out our facilities plan, We'll be calling on all of Black Bear Nation to join us in supporting our efforts to leverage the $90 million Alfon grant by raising $20 million over the next 10 years. These funds will be essential for us to create the facilities that our student athletes, our fans, our community and our state deserve up here in Orono. Going forward, operational support of our programs will continue to be important. In fact, probably more important than ever. Over the few past few years, we launched the Alfon Fund, our well-branded annual fund that supports the operations of all of our 17 sport programs. With nearly 3,000 donors and over $1.2 million raised annually to support our programs, the Alfon Fund is critical to our success now and going forward. Whether it's recruiting, equipment, travel, or anything that our teams and our coaches need to create and provide a Division I experience for our student athletes, the Alfon Fund and its support is really important to that entire process. And I couldn't thank our donors enough for joining us on that front. This week, we have another annual uh, homecoming challenge where this year we challenged all of our donors in Black Bear Nation to have 100 gifts by the end of homecoming Sunday. We're over three quarters away to our goal and we're hoping to finish strong here. And I hope you'll consider going to www.goblackbears.com and making a gift to the homecoming challenge today. You can support your favorite team or make an unrestricted gift to support the Alphon Fund and it'll help us meet our goal and support our programs. You know, this is a great place to work. As a lifelong Mainer, uh, the University of Maine is a special place. And all of us that went there and were lucky enough to graduate from the University of Maine know exactly what I mean. We travel around the country and the world as Maine's only Division I program representing the state of Maine. And whether you're in an airport or at a game or just sitting in a restaurant, we all know the countless number of people that come up to us when they see the main logo and start sharing their experiences, either as a black bear or as their time in the state we all love. And that's gonna be even more special going forward as we make these improvements to our facilities and create a division one experience that we can all be proud of. So Harold Alphon, Mr. Alphon, was a very special person. I only had the opportunity to meet him a few times as a student, but I've been fortunate enough to work with many of the family members and the staff of the Harold Alfon Foundation for the last eight or nine years. And one of the quotes that always sticks out to me, one of Harold's favorite quotes, is if you keep chopping wood, eventually you'll have a pile. And I think that sums up our athletic department in our state, as well as any quote I've ever heard. We have a blue collar mentality here in the Maine Athletic Department. We roll up our sleeves, our coaches, our staff, our student athletes, our fans, and we get after it each and every day. And I believe that in the end, that's gonna leave us with something we can all be very proud of 
as we put the work in that's necessary to have a Division I program in here in Maine that we can all be proud of. So I want to thank all you in Black Bear Nation for all you do to support the Alphon Fund and Maine Athletics. I can't wait, we can't wait to see you all at games again. We miss you all so much. We miss watching the kids compete. And I hope you enjoy the game today. And I feel really good here in the Woodcock household as we get our tailgate fired up here that we have a good chance at a great result here today. So go Maine, enjoy the game, and we'll see you soon. Hey, Bananas, did you catch the email about free ATMs? Did you cover the fact that they're free worldwide for our customers? No strings attached? Great. Hi there, I'm Bob Montgomery Rice, President and CEO of Bangor Savings Bank, and a huge UMaine sports fan. We are excited to be the premier sponsor of the University of Maine Athletics. We know as athletes, you've worked hard each and every day to get where you are today, and we are so proud of you. Seeing you succeed on and off the field, the ice, and the court is important to us. We want to be there for you now and in the future. Believe in you, we do. Now, go Black Bears! No, Bananas! I mean, go Black Bears! Let's go! Not, let's kick off the game! Not go, Black Bears, leave, get out of here! Oh, don't mind him, he's new around here. For more than 168 years, Bangor Savings Bank has stood by its employees, customers, and communities. And we're not stopping now. We will be here for you. Today and every day ahead. Hammond Lumber Company has everything you need for your home improvement projects. A wide selection of Energy Star rated windows, high R value insulated doors, and top quality insulation and weather stripping. Hammond showrooms are open with CDC recommended procedures in place. Or browse Hammond's website and place your order by phone. Curbside pickup is available and delivery is free within striking distance of any Hammond location. Prepare your home for any type of weather with help from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Do you know your main dairy farmers? Chances are we're a lot like you. We are parents, grandparents, we are small business owners. We are a part of our communities. We are your neighbors. We are undeniably dairy. Time for UMaine football. The Black Bears are back home at Alphonse Stadium for just the third time this season. Maine, with their sights set on a CAA title, are looking for the Black Hole defense to come up big once again. Meanwhile, the Great Danes of UAlbany have given the Black Bears fits in Orno, and led by a potent offense, the Danes are hoping to fetch their first conference victory. It's homecoming at the University of Maine, and the Black Bears and Great Danes are coming up next.
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Alphonse Stadium, and welcome to the Hammond Lumber Black Bear pregame show. It's homecoming at the University of Maine as the UMaine Black Bears host the Albany Great Dames. Maine is 3-1 and in conference play. Albany is 0-4 in the CAA. I'm Jim Church, along with former Black Bear Mark Coots. Third straight homecoming game for the Black Bears a couple of weeks ago. A last-second win at Rhode Island. Last week, a disappointing loss on the road at William & Mary. Finally, some home cooking for the Black Bears as they look to get back on the winning track. Record's a little lopsided, but this Great Dane team, not a team the Black Bears can look past. Absolutely right. Albany can put up some points. They have over 500 yards of offense last week. They have a very good quarterback in Vincent Testaverde, and they've got some playmakers. Maine's going to have to play good defense today. Yeah, Vincent Testaverde, the quarterback, one of those playmakers, Jawan Green, coming off two straight 100-yard games and receiving. He averages 21 yards a catch, has three touchdowns on the year, and if he catches the ball in open space, look out, he can make it happen. And certainly one guy the Great Dane defense will have their eyes on, Ernest Edwards, 196 yards last week. He had over 300 yards in total offense last week. He also is a playmaker, and he can do it coming out of wide receiver, running back, or returning kicks. All right, a big one today for the Black Bears in their conference title quest. The Bears and the Great Danes coming up. This has been the Hammond Lumber Black Bear pregame show. There's still time left in this year's building season, and Hammond Lumber Company is here to help. From free estimating and planning, to design and drafting services, and a wide variety of products, as well as complete home and garage packages, Hammond showrooms are open with CDC-recommended procedures in place. Or browse online and place your order by phone. Delivery is free within striking distance of any Hammond location statewide. Keep your project on schedule with help from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. For more than 168 years, Bangor Savings Bank has stood by its employees, customers, and communities. And we're not stopping now. We will be here for you. Today, and every day ahead. Welcome back to Alphonse Stadium, homecoming here at the University of Maine. A chilly afternoon here in Orno, temperature about 39 degrees, winds out of the northeast. As we get set for this one between the Maine Black Bears and the Albany Great Danes, it's time for the Uniform Report. It's brought to you by Unifirst Corporation. Unifirst Uniforms and Facility Services enhance your business image at the very best value. That's Unifirst Uniforms and Services. The Maine Black Bears in the navy blue jerseys trimmed with white numerals and lettering. Black Bears in the white pants today and for Albany they're going with all white trimmed in purple and gold without further ado Mark let's get to the keys in this game today so first Maine needs to minimize their penalties the last couple of weeks they've been penalized 14 and 16 times they also need to minimize their turnovers they turned the ball over three times last week and it cost them 10 points and as we spoke about in the open Maine cannot take Albany lightly. You, despite their record, Albany can put some points up. All right, let's get the view from the sideline. We'll send it down to our sideline reporter, Andrew Badillo. Jim, Mark, thank you very much. All questions surrounding the weather down here at Alphonse Stadium. Everyone waiting for that nor'easter that is creeping up through the coast right now. Conditions are dry, and we may get a little lucky rain only forecasted and snow around 3, 4 o'clock. Despite all that, didn't stop the crowd from coming out for homecoming this week against the Great Danes. And wouldn't you know it, a local product may get his chance to shine right here in front of his hometown. Andre Miller, an Old Town grad, grad will be stepping in potentially for the injured Micah Wright. Guys, that's all I got here from a dry sideline. Hopefully, back up to you. All right, thank you very much, Andrew. And we are set to kick this one off. Black Bears will be on the receiving end of this kickoff from Ethan Stark. He's out of Erie, Pennsylvania, a redshirt senior. And we are underway. High arching kick fielded at about the eight yard line. And it's going to be taken there by Ernest Edwards and he'll be brought down at about the 23 yard line. 
And now we'll get to uh, the starting lineups uh, for the main offense. Of course, Chris Ferguson coming back for the Black Bears. Joe Fitzpatrick will be in there, along with Ramon Jefferson. Uh, Micah Wright uh, likely not to be in there today for the Black Bears. He has a, a foot injury, but uh, Ernest Edwards, the focus there. And Albany, defensively, they have had their struggles coming into this ball game. Again, Albany 0-4 in the conference. High-scoring game against Towson last week. Those two teams put up a ton of yards in that ball game. All right, Ferguson from the shotgun, looking downfield across the middle. He's got his man, Ernest Edwards. He caught it at midfield. He's trying to outrace the defenders, and Ernest Edwards will take it home. Touchdown, Black Bears. First play of the ball game from the 23-yard line. Ferguson to Edwards, 77 yards later, Mark. And the Black Bears have put up six. Sorry about that. I'm stunned. What a great start for the University of Maine. Homecoming. If you want to get on the board early, certainly the first play of the game is the way to do it. Well, Ernest Edwards was featured in our... Hammond Lumber Black Bear pregame show, 196 yards receiving last week, amassed over 300 yards of total offense, and he's got 77 already in this one. And we are just 19 seconds in. The extra point by Kenny Doak is good. Can't start it any better than that. The Black Bears up 7 0 here against Albany. Here's you got Edwards just doing a post perfect ball laid right in there and he uses his speed trying to chase him down. It's not going to happen. He is a remarkable football player from a coaching standpoint uh, knowing what Edwards can do understanding the numbers he has been putting up. It's hard to believe that he didn't draw a little more attention right there. So it all gets you down to what a defensive philosophy is. Albany likes to play his own defense. In the secondary, when you do that, guys can get open. Conversely, Maine, we like to play man. We'll always have somebody on their receivers. All right, so the Black Bears kicking off here. Torching that Albany defense on the first offensive play of the ball game. Kenny Doak once again doing the honors. It's been a very eventful season for number 31. When we were last on the air, Mark Kenny Doak tying a school record with a 52 yard field goal to beat uh, beat Villanova and then a week later he beats uh, the Rhodey Rams on a last second field goal. Yes yeah, so if you think about it, our last two plays here have been a 52 yard <laughs> field goal to win it and then opening drive. Yeah good point. All right Albany gets the ball up over the 35. Serious hit there we got a black bear down on the field. And let's take a look at the Albany offense. And certainly one name stands out there. Vincent Testaverde, the son of Vinny Testaverde, longtime NFL quarterback. Vinny is uh, in the stands here at Alphon Stadium. And defensively for the Black Bears, they're missing Charles Mitchell today. He is out of the lineup. But uh, Sterling Sheffield, the leader, along with Deshaun Stevens of that defensive unit for the main Black Bears. Getting on the board first for Maine, too, it gives them a different perspective playing defensively, meaning that now they can really get at it. They normally get after it anyway, but I think now you're going to see Maine lay their ears back on defense and really go after Testaverde. Black Bears are 2-0 and here at home. Game number three here in the 2018 season at Alphonse Stadium. You see the hit right there. And it's number 43 for the Black Bears. That's Jerron Grayer. And he's uh, on his feet and heading back to the sideline there for the Black Bears. Good to see him going off the field under his own power. Appears to be a right arm or a shoulder injury there for Grayer. Well, there's Vincent Testaverde, senior, 6'1, 211 from Odessa, Florida. 43 yards per game, 11 touchdowns, but also 11 interceptions. Lights are on here at Alphonse Stadium on this gray afternoon. 
from the shotgun. Testa Verde looked left, well covered there, finds his secondary receiver, and the pass is complete. Reeling it in there is Jawan Green. We talked about him in the pregame show. Yeah, same thing. Get him in open space like they just did. A little slot screen. Gets upfield a couple yards. Nice, nice play. Yeah, good pickup there on first down for Albany. So it's going to bring up second down and a long one for the Great Danes. Great Danes have given the Black Bears fits here in Orno. Maine just two and four against Albany here at Alphonse Stadium. And now they're going to give it and working around that left end. More good yardage there for Albany. That's Dev Holmes, 5 8 wideouts. Picking up the first down. Yep, just a little edge sweep. Darius Hart moved up to make the play from the safety spot, but he kind of lost contain. Black hole defense has been strong for Maine this year. They're very good against the run. Not the case the, there as the Great Danes pick up their first first down of the ball game. Testa Verde back to pass going deep and that pass a little too strong. Just beyond the outstretched arms there of Jawan Green. Good coverage by the Black Bears. Catley Joseph. Again main and man coverage. Catley Joseph all by himself out there but does a nice job covering him. Bring up second down and 10. Early first quarter action, but already a touchdown for the Black Bears. Their first offensive play of the afternoon. 77 yards from Chris Ferguson to Ernest Edwards. Testa Verde from the shotgun again. He's going to sling it to the left side. And coming up to make the hit there for the Black Bears is Darius Hart. He got there relatively quickly to prevent further damage. And it's going to be third down here for the Great Danes and Testa Verde. Good homecoming crowd here. Grayer back into the ball game for the Black Bears after going into the tent down below to be checked out. More good news for the Black Bears and their defense. I would expect Maine to bring some pressure right here. Third and seven. Test the Verde going to the air, feeling some pressure, fires it downfield. That's going to be picked off. He threw that one up for grabs. The pickoff there by Darius Hart. Hart to about the 38 yard line where he's taken down. So that is interception number 12 by Vincent Testaverde and a very dangerous pass. And he's hearing it uh, from the coaching staff on the sidelines. Just flung that one out there. And Hart playing center field here, Mark. Yeah, two deep safeties from Maine. Man on the corner. He's playing center field, just comes over, and makes the pick. Great play. So big turnover there for the main defense. And we got a sideline warning against Albany. Hart surveying the field. Good return after the interception as well. So the Black Bears will have good field position. It's a perfect example of what can happen when you can pressure the quarterback. You force him into make a mistake, and that's exactly what happened right there. And again, you can do more of that when you have the lead early in the game. Ernest Edwards, Jaquan Blair. Wide to the near side. Ramon Jefferson in the backfield for the Black Bears. Good to see Ramon back in a main uniform. Last week, 80 yards, 5.7 yards per carry in the loss at William and Mary. Fake to Jefferson. Ferguson going to the air again, going deep, pass intended for Edwards. He almost came up with it. Had to twist his body to try to get back to that pass from Ferguson. If that one is thrown in stride, the Bears may be two for two. A near miss. Again, you got Ernest Edwards doing another post, running all the way across the field. The ball just a little outside his stretch. Would have been a nice play. What I like about that is Maine's being really aggressive. Yes, indeed. 
Albany defense struggling a bit and certainly loosened up through the first couple of offensive plays here for the Black Bears. And this one is going nowhere. As the pass goes to the right side and Devin Young, but the Great Danes quickly converge on him. So Ming throwing it deep early. It's going to loosen up the secondary. Going to make the linebackers a little bit less aggressive coming up to stop the run. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how Albany decides to play this. So the Black Bears, Black Bears first third down of the ball game, and Andre Miller, the former Old Town Coyote, is in the ball game. You can see him right there. And Ferguson going to the air, comes to the near side. The pass is caught, but again, nice job there by the Albany defense to close in on Devin Young. And they'll pick up about four on that play, but it's going to be fourth down for the Black Bears, and we'll see our first punt in this contest. If you look there, it's a main head coach Joe Harrisimiak on the sidelines. Coach H is bundled up for this one this afternoon. Again, our temperature right around 39, 40 degrees for this homecoming game. Third straight homecoming game for the Black Bears. Obviously their first one here at Alphonse Stadium. That ball is booted down to about the 27 yard line where it's taken there by Donovan McDonald. All right, we're going to take a timeout here. When we come back, Albany will have the football. Good start for the Black Bears. Seven nothing Maine here on the Black Bears Sports Network. What motivates us at Casella? I want to help our customers recycle as much as possible. Because I care about the environment and how our company impacts our towns. And at Casella Organics, we find new uses for all sorts of materials. It's hard work. But I'm helping people every day. And that makes me feel like part of the community. A community I care about. So I do everything I can to sustain the resources of our environment. Casella, dependable, caring people, part of your community. Out here, if you have the will, you can lead the way with the all-new Fisher Easy V V Plow. Purpose built to provide industry-leading features, performance, and efficiency, just like the other V Plows in our lineup, but in a lightweight design that's ideal for businesses and homeowners using half-ton trucks. A strong yet versatile plow that handles the work and won't back down. The all-new Fisher Easy V V Plow, built for Fisher Nation. For more information, visit fisherplows.com. All right, Albany with the football. Vincent Testaverde in their first possession through the interception. Albany gets it back, trailing 7 0. Testaverde, the give here to number 24. That's EB Token Hanks. Elijah EB Token Hanks. Well said. <laughs> Does not necessarily uh, sound uh, sound as it looks uh, on paper here, but that is uh, what we've been given. And now we've got some flags down, flags all over the place. And let's see what the call is. Our referee today, Anthony Hayes, for this. Ball game between the Great Danes and the Black Bears. So the Black Bears uh, penalize five yards. Great Danes losing a yard on that first place. So it's going to be second down and six. Testa Verde back to pass again. And this pass is going to be almost hauled in there by Jawan Green. Tried to make a one handed catch. He's barking at the official on the far sideline there. I thought he was held a bit there by the main defender. Let's take another look. Yeah, Richard Card on the coverage does a nice job staying with him. When you're playing man, it's really hard to keep your hands off the offensive receiver. So it's nice to see that the referees are letting them play. So third down and long here for the Great Danes. Black hole defense try to, trying to get that ball back for the main offense. Let's see if the Bears can apply a little pressure here on Testa Verde. And they will. He is under pressure and he's going to go down. Sterling Sheffield in there. Along with Kayon Whitaker. 
And just what the doctor ordered there for the Black Bears, a loss for Albany. The Black Bears should have pretty good field. That's what Maine does. They bring pressure every play. And there's Sheffield again making another sack. Low line drive kick. It's going to take a main bounce and roll, and it'll be finally touched down at the Black Bears 45. We're seeing that Vincent Testaverde, much like his dad, who had a very long and at different points illustrious NFL career, but not all that mobile. Not all that mobile, but I'll tell you what, he had a cannon for an arm, and he had a lot of good years in the NFL. And inside the, the matchup here between the Albany offense, which is their strong point, and the Maine defense, which for the most part has been the Black Bears' strong point. You can see how good Maine is against the, the run there. Just 61.70 yards per game. The Black Bears can apply some pressure as they, as they pick up uh, sack number 29 on that last play. Ernest Edwards on the receiving end, uh, play number one in this possession. And that completion will gain about five yards for the Black Bears. They'll take that. It's a very good first play, a little wide receiver screen. Juwan Blair out in front blocking. We'll take five yards every play. Chris Ferguson, the sophomore quarterback for the Black Bears, really coming into his own. Of course, the injury earlier this season, a setback for the main offense. Ferguson, good size for a quarterback, 6'3", about 215 pounds. Fakes to Jefferson, actually gives to Jefferson, and Ramon Jefferson is going to pick up a first down. Well, he faked out me, and he faked out the Albany defense, and the whistle had blown, and Jefferson is taken down to the turf pretty hard there. Appears to be okay. But those chains will move across the way. Albany rushes four men. They got seven guys in coverage. It's probably a checkoff by Ferguson to run the football. Nice call on his part. Ferguson under center this time. Jefferson the lone back. Belcher in motion for the Black Bears. The fake to Jefferson this time. Roll to the right. Pass complete. Ernest Edwards. No, that's Jaquan Blair. The catch. Lost his footing on the turf. And the ball will be down right there. So a four yard pickup. So what you're noticing is that Albany now is playing three deep zone. And they're letting the underneath passes go. So that's what Maine's taking. They're going to take four and five yards out of pop now. Black Bears scoring on their first offensive play of the game. Ferguson to Edwards, 77 yards on the pass. Black Bears trying to get back on the board here in this first quarter. And it's going to be Jefferson with the carry, and he'll pick up another first down. Good to see the Black Bears get off to a quick start. The first quarter has not been their friend, Mark, here in 2018. Has not been their favorite friend, that's for sure. It seems to me like Maine is coming out really disciplined today. I'm sure they've talked about that a lot at practice, but even their execution on their plays has been perfect. Yeah, Ernest Edwards, as we've mentioned a couple of times, over 190 yards receiving last week, but the Black Bears over 190 yards in penalties in their loss at William and Mary. You just can't have that. Tough to win a game with that amount of penalties. Some teams don't have that kind of yardage on offense in a whole game, let alone in penalties. And Coach Joe harris laying down the law this week that if uh, any type of unsportsmanlike activity or excessive action after the play, that player is going to sit maybe for the rest of the game. Oh, fumble on the snap there, and Ferguson picks it up but can't go anywhere. Let's take a look at this series between the Albany Great Danes and the Maine Black Bears. Maine leads it overall, 6-5 to five last meeting, coming last year at Albany. That was a 12-10 win for the Black Bears. The road team in this matchup, eight wins and 11 meetings. Black Bears want to change that, that trend. Yes. 
From the shotgun, Ferguson to the air, fires to the left side, and it's caught by Belcher. Belcher, the former quarterback, and he's got another first down for the Black Bears. Reception at the 16. He split out wide left, does a little eight yard hook. Ball's delivered on time, first down. A big target there for Chris Ferguson, Drew Belcher. Richard Senior, 6'3, 253 out of Reading, Pennsylvania. A Reading Mass, excuse me. There is a Reading, Pennsylvania. Used to be a farm team of the Phillies. Yep. Pass to the right side. It's going to be caught by Andre Miller. He goes out of bounds at about the one yard line. Great athletic play there by Miller out of Old Town High School. Had to right the body to make this catch. Yep, a little back shoulder throw. Makes a nice adjustment. Great catch. I love watching kids that grow up in Maine that stay home and they play for their play for the university. It's wonderful to see. Spoken like a true Mainer who came to the am. University of Maine. Absolutely. Andre Miller, sophomore 6'2, 213. Good opportunity here for the Black Bears, first and goal. And we've got movement. Let's see who this one will be against. Officials talking it over. 451 left to go here in the first quarter. And it's going to go against Albany, it would appear. All sides. Number 93. Have the distance. Antoine White, defensive lineman, a little anxious on that play. If you're on the defensive line for Albany right now, you're digging in and you need to get off the ball quick. Ferguson now will move up under center. And quarterback sneak denied on his first attempt, but he'll fall into the end zone. Yes. Good effort there by the main quarterback. The Bears pick up their second score this afternoon. They now lead Albany 13 to nothing. Terrific second effort right there by Chris Ferguson. They stack him up. He bounces it up to the right side. And just Will gets him into the end zone. Well done. Yeah, great feel for that play there by Ferguson sliding down the line and ending up in the blue end zone. Here's Dope for the extra point. And he is perfect with that one. All right, a good start for Maine. They've had their difficulties in the first quarter. Not the case here this afternoon. Black Bears, after the touchdown by Ferguson, lead it 14 to nothing. Do you know your Maine dairy farmers? Chances are we're a lot like you. We are parents, grandparents, we are small business owners. We are a part of our communities. We are your neighbors. We are undeniably dairy. Hammond Lumber Company has everything you need for your home improvement projects. A wide selection of Energy Star rated windows, high R value insulated doors, and top quality insulation and weather stripping. Hammond showrooms are open with CDC recommended procedures in place. Or browse Hammond's website and place your order by phone. Curbside pickup is available and delivery is free within striking distance of any Hammond location. Prepare your home for any type of weather with help from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. So an excellent start here from Maine in this one as they uh, have the 14 to nothing lead. Black Bears already five first downs here in the ball game. Good start for Chris Ferguson. Touchdown pass to Ernest Edwards on the first offensive play of the game. Ferguson to this point seven for eight 114 yards one touchdown. And he has scored a touchdown on the ground with that uh, quarterback sneak. So Kenny Doak back to work. 434 left to go here in the first quarter, and the Great Danes on their heels. And that kick is going to go out of bounds at about the 
three yard line. Yellow flag comes out. You've seen Kenny Doak do that before. Started the Villanova game kicking the ball out of bounds. So pretty good field position for Albany to start. I'm not quite sure what they were looking to do there because that ball was kicked at uh, number four, Jawan Green, and he's a really good kick return. I'm not sure that that's where we want to be cooking, kicking the ball, but we'll see. Ball out of bounds, so they place it at the 35. That's where Albany will get things going. Their third possession of the afternoon. First one. Resulted in an interception thrown by Vincent Testaverde, his 12th of the season. The breeze we have here blowing across the field. And the Great Danes will keep it on the ground here. And it's going to be Kibi Token Hanks. I'll check that. Carl Mofor. Maine doing a nice job on defense. They're so tough against the run and of course when you go to try to pass on them they're going to bring the pressure. Testa Verde back in shotgun formation once again. Fakes the handoff across the middle he's got a big tight end we got a flag down. The catch made there by big number 86. LJ Wisniewski came down on his back and rolled over on his front side and slowly trying to get to his feet. May have had the wind knocked out of him there. Let's see what the flag is. Let's see Wisniewski being checked out by the Great Dane trainer. Also have to think about the old uh, noggin there. Maybe that hit the turf a little hard. It's the offense. Five yard penalty. Replay second down. Number and, 67. And unfortunately for Wesneski and the Great Danes, all for naught. Yeah, nice play. So that's play action. Oh, yeah, I think it yeah, is the head. Bang his head. Play action, main linebacker step up, but they got to get back and cover that little seam route by the tight end. For a linebacker, that is one of the toughest plays to cover because you're trying to play run first and then you got to re retreat and get that tight end. Yeah, Wesneski, that may put him out of the ball game. For the duration, we'll see. Illegal man downfield is the call. So the penalty against Albany is going to bring up a second down and 11. As Wisniewski to his feet. Not looking real good, though, is he? Well, let's hope he's let's hope he's okay. Yeah, that head snapped back. With uh, substantial force into the turf. Well, Mark, uh, a couple weeks ago, we saw a lot of colors here in the uh, trees out beyond the athletic facilities here at the University of Maine, but we've lost a lot of those leaves heading into this one. It is almost winter in Maine. I actually saw some snow driving up here on 95. Ouch. Yeah, there's <laughs> been snow here in the state of Maine outside the Bangor area and another penalty is going to go against the Great Danes so False start. not as the Danes five. drew it up second down. penalties turnovers big plays for the Black Bears 14 to nothing deficit may not seem like it but you know you got to credit Maine's defense to some of the confusion that Albany is having right now because they're doing a lot of checking at the line of scrimmage trying to figure out if Maine's coming if they're going to lay back in coverage. Testa Verde with Mo Four to his right steps up in the pocket pressure coming from Maine Testa Verde gets it off and it's going to fall safely receiver went down to the ground Deb Holmes pass was long. No black bear could get to it, so just an incomplete pass, but third and very long. Richard Carr in coverage again, just has him covered like a blanket. Maine's man to man defense right now is really, really good. 
So a tough spot here for the Great Danes. Got three quarterbacks on the far sideline. Sending in the signals. Only one of those quarterbacks. Important. Snap to Testaverde. Screen to the left side and nothing doing. Black Bears right there. Mofor taken down near the line of scrimmage. And the black hole defense does it again as the punt unit comes on for Albany. We'll see Mozo Nelson stepping up in Sheffield. So we rushed three guys right there and we were man coverage on everybody. No way you're going to run a screen against that. Zion Nelson right there to make the play. Here's the punt. Edwards, no fair catch. He is hit almost immediately, maybe gains a yard or two after fielding that punt. But another injured Albany Great Dame. That's Eli Menser down, but uh, being helped up by his teammates. Man, this has been a very tough first quarter for Albany in more ways than one. Physically, definitely, and certainly the scoreboard reflects their problems. All right, we've got to take a timeout here as the Black Bears are. Nope, we're going to keep it right here as uh, the Bears come back on the field. You know, one of the problems that Albany's going to have is, you know, when you play CAA games one after another, having depth on your team is important. And when you get an injury after injury, it's hard to recover. Yeah, I saw the recent games for these two teams. Albany falling to Towson, the Black Bears dropping one to William and Mary on the road. Hopefully that's not one of those games that got away from the Black Bears and will hurt them down the stretch here. Mark, a very winnable game at William and Mary. Yep. But again, like we said before, you turned the ball over three times, led to 10 points, plus you had 14 penalties. That's impossible to overcome. It really is. It's very difficult. Ferguson surveying the situation as Blair and Edwards to his right. Fakes to Jefferson, now rolls to his right. He'll get the ball to Blair, who breaks a tackle. And now the Great Danes close on him. But a solid pickup there on second down for the Black Bears. Second time Maine's run that play. Again, Blair in the slot, does a little out. Perfect ball, does great job getting past that defender. Nice pickup. So third and short for Maine, third and two for the Black Bears. Andre Miller, Jaquan Blair to the near side. Edwards wide right. Belcher and Jefferson in the in the background, in the backfield, I should say, for the Black Bears. Here's the pass to Miller, and he can't hold on. Pass is incomplete. Looked like Andre had a little seam there to get upfield, pick up that first down but rush things just a little bit. Just a little bit. He started running before he caught it. I think he had uh, big guys on that, saw some green, and just started running before he had the ball. I wonder if this might be uh, fake punt territory. 51 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Here's the punt. David Gelb, the left-footed punter, gets it away. Short kick. And Albany will have the ball at the 31-yard line for their final play or two here in this first quarter. That's why I'm in the booth, Jim. I call for a fake punt, and they do the right thing and kick the ball away with a 14-point lead. Yeah, they have the, <laughs> all the momentum on their side. Of course, they have the very strong defense. Don't want to get too fancy in this uh, position here. Here's the give to Mofor. Or actually, that's EB Token. EB Token Hanks. Hanks is number 24. Mofor, number 21. Elijah, 
Mike Bears will be on the road the next couple of weekends at Towson, then Richmond before playing the season finale here at Alphonse Stadium. Second and 13 for Testaverde and the Great Danes. Down to eight seconds. They get the snap off with five. Testaverde looks right. Nothing there. Pressure coming for the Black Bears now. He'll tuck it under. And Vincent Testaverde is going to be taken down from behind short of the first down marker. And it's going to be third down for the Albany Great Danes. That's going to do it for the first quarter. Here at Althon, we got a flag down. Let's see what yeah. the call is. Holding offense number 67, 10-yard penalty, replay second down. So a hold against Albany. Great Danes will have the ball. It'll be third and long when we come back. Black Bears, strong start, 14 to nothing Maine. Edwards got it going for the Black Bears. The best way I can describe working with Ham and Lumber, our relationship is like working with a group of friends. Their service is excellent in the store. Uh, you walk in, there's always somebody there waiting to help you. Delivery, on-site help, whatever is needed, they're there for us. Aggressive on the pricing, they have all the materials and products we need. Their sales service is exceptional. They deliver everything when we expect it to be delivered. It always comes back to service with Ham and Lumber being the most important thing. Mentioned another play was uh, run while we were away after the penalty. So with no time on the clock, quarter not ending with the penalty. It's going to be third down and very long here for Albany. Third down and 26. See what Testaverde has in his bag of tricks. What it's going to be is a sack by the Black Hole defense. And Testaverde. That's just a bad spot to be in. Third and 26, deep in your own territory. You know it's coming from the Bears. Absolutely. And what was really amazing about that play, again, we only rushed three players. Yeah. We had eight guys in coverage. You can see here the pressure coming. Testaverde can't find an open receiver and uh, takes a hit from Sterling Sheffield there coming from that right side. And Testaverde is down. So we have seen a number of uh, Albany Great Danes down and they're looking at that right leg. You know, I think too for Maine one of the because Sterling Sharp gets so much recognition that we sometimes forget about you know Ken uh, Kenyon Whitaker defensive tackle and now Skylar Bowman you know when you get two big bookends like that it does help to open it up so that Sterling can get in there and get those sacks. Yeah, Vincent uh, Testaverde down, and uh, here's a good look at uh, the bio of Vincent Testaverde, a senior coming to uh, Albany, 6'1", 211. Sato due to transfer rules back in 2017 last year. Was on the roster at the University of Miami. Of course, familiar territory there for the Testaverdes. Was a true freshman for Texas Tech back in 2014. So he's bounced around, much like his father did in the NFL. Vinny Testaverde, 21 seasons. Uh, played with Tampa Bay, Cleveland, Baltimore, and Carolina, as you see there, among others. Had a short stint with the Patriots as well. And you saw Vincent, young Vincent there with uh, Vinny Testaverde. There he is with the Buccaneers, the Browns. The Jets. I remember those days. I used, oh, to have, yeah. I used to have season tickets watching him. There he is in a Pats uniform, poised to make a play there. But uh, right now, Vinny not happy about the situation here at Alphonse Stadium with his son down on the turf now getting to his feet. But Vincent Testaverde is going to limp his way off the field. And it's going to be fourth down here. 33 yards to go. So second sack in the ball game for the Black Bears. 
And who else? Sterling Sheffield. So the Great Danes are going to have to punt it from their end zone as Testaverde finally getting off the field here. Looks like we might be going for it. Edwards is back to receive the punt. It's high, but not real long. And Edwards makes the fair catch at about the 45 yard line. So the Black Bears rolling here in the first half already with a 14 point lead. They're going to get the football with great field position here. Between the penalties that we've had and the injuries, it feels like the game's kind of been, it doesn't have any sync to it right now. It'd be nice to see Maine rattle off six or seven good plays and get some rhythm back. And interesting here to be playing Albany this week, Mark. Uh, Albany playing Towson last week. That's going to be the next opponent for the Black Bears on the road next Saturday. So a chance to kind of see Albany against two of the top teams in the league. And there's the first sack of the ball game for Albany. Great pursuit there by Eli Menser, the linebacker coming from the right side, taking Chris Ferguson down. Loss of nine for the Black Bears. No chance there for Ferguson. Menser was in that main backfield. Unaccounted for, comes off the right edge. Free shot right to Ferguson. So second and 19 for Maine. They're now in their own territory after that loss and an incomplete pass there. Pass intended for the running back Ramon Jefferson. So not a good start to this possession for Maine. And it will be third down and 19. Again it just seems like we're a little out of sync right now. Mentioned Towson, the next opponent for the Black Bears. They're the only remaining undefeated team in the CAA coming into this weekend's action. Ferguson to the air. Pressure goes underneath to Edwards. Edwards trying to escape a trio of Albany defenders. Can't do it. It's back near the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to be fourth and ten for the Black Bears. Out of field goal range, so David Gell, the punter, will come on the field. Main. Go ahead, Mark. Well, Maine went with five wides on that one, just try to get the ball underneath to Ernest Edwards, get it in his hands, maybe he could make a play. Didn't happen. First home game here at Alphonse Stadium, where the students have actually been on campus. Of course, they had the early start in late August. Students had not arrived as of yet for the fall semester, and then the last time we were here for the win against Villanova the students were on October break high arching kick great hang time there by Gelb can the Black Bears get to it. Oh great job there by the puncher Gelb and the coverage there by the main punch unit. All right. All but he's going to get it back. You see the pressure coming here. Vincent Testaverde has been under pressure all day long. Black Bears lead it 14 to nothing. For more than 168 years, Bangor Savings Bank has stood by its employees, customers, and communities. And we're not stopping now. We will be here for you. Today and every day ahead. There's still time left in this year's building season and Hammond Lumber Company is here to help. From free estimating and planning to design and drafting services and a wide variety of products as well as complete home and garage packages. Hammond showrooms are open with CDC recommended procedures in place or browse online and place your order by phone. Delivery is free within striking distance of any Hammond location statewide. Keep your project on schedule with help from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Another tough spot as you see Vincent Testaverde the starting quarterback for Albany he's on the sideline and coming out onto the field it's going to be Will Brunson he is a redshirt junior out of Myrtle Beach South Carolina so he is thrust into a difficult position here His team down by 14 so they keep it on the ground 
It's going to be EB Token Hanks with the carry there on first down. He'll advance it about three yards. Second down and seven for the Great Danes. Great Danes two and five overall. 0 and four in conference play. I would not expect Albany to do anything to get themselves in trouble this deep in Maine's. Brunson from the shotgun. The token hangs to his left. Here's the snap and the toss to Juwan Green. He can't hold on. That would have been a first down, but the pass is incomplete. Let's go down on the sideline. Here's Andrew Badillo. Thanks a lot, Jim. A lot was made about the matchup between the main linebackers and the Albany slot receivers, Dev Holmes, Juwan Green versus Sterling Sheffield and Jerron Greer. So far, it's been Sheffield actually applying pressure on Vincent Testaverde so far, eventually knocking him out of the game with a couple big sacks. But that is a big matchup to watch moving forward those slot receivers versus those coverage linebackers for the Black Bears. Guys, back to you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Third down. Seven to go. Brunson near the goal line, now in the end zone, fires it to the right side, just throwing it away. And a nice catch there, a one-handed catch by a member of the chain gang. It's a round of applause from the uh, fans across the way, but it's going to be an incomplete pass. So three and out for you, Albany, with the uh, redshirt junior in there at quarterback. Smart play, just get rid of the ball. Maine brings pressure like they always do. He's got no place to go. Knows he's going to get sacked. Just chucks it out of bounds. Smart. Pressure coming, and the kick is blocked. Ball loose around the five. Albany will pounce on it, but it's going to be Maine football. Well, Maine almost blocked it on the punt before, so it's not surprising they were able to get that one. Nevin Sussman, the punter, no chance there. He's a senior out of Sandy Spring, Maryland. And he got dinged up a little bit there. Oh, a little uh, mishandle there. And at that point, no chance for Sussman. So the Black Bears on the doorstep. Already with a 14 to nothing lead and the Black Bears getting contributions from every aspect of their football team in this one. Ferguson under center. He's got Jefferson behind him. Goes to the right side. Passes incomplete. Trying to hit Blair right near the pylon. Bit of a dangerous pass there. Good coverage by U Albany. Kareem Brown in the coverage there for the Great Danes. That was a very dangerous play. He had a great, uh, good break on the ball, almost picked it. If he had gotten that, that would have been <laughs> six the other way. He'd still be running. Second down and goal for the Black Bears from the five. Ferguson gives it to Jefferson, and Jefferson hit in the backfield. Great job there by number 93, Antoine White. As he broke through that main offensive line. Almost took the handoff away. He was in there so quick. Yeah. You know, you get the ball on the five yard line like that for Maine. It's a seven point opportunity. Walking away with three would be a disappointment right now. seen uh, Joe Fitzpatrick he is uh, often used in these situations down close to the goal line not on third and goal from the seven but certainly first and goal from the five Ferguson goes to the left side the pass is complete to Belcher at about the two so an interesting choice coming up here for head coach Joe Harris it's going to be fourth down and goal from the two yard line looks like the Black Bears are going to go for it. I like it. As you mentioned earlier, Mark, Maine has been aggressive from the outset. That first offensive play. Post pattern. Long pass downfield. Complete to Ernest Edwards. Took it 77 yards for the touchdown. 
Black Bears have sputtered a little bit here in their last couple of possessions, trying to get in the end zone here. Ferguson looking to go from the air, but he's going to be taken down. So the Great Danes down by 14 and in a tough spot there. The Black Bears had first and goal from the five, and they are going to turn it over on downs. Good stand there by you, Albany. Very good stand by Albany. And you know what you do a little bit right here is you're breathing life back into Albany when you could take it out of them if you score right there. And I think uh, not having Joe Fitzpatrick in that series right there for Maine. No good have, for the Black Bears. I'd have to agree with you. See the head coach Joe Harris Semiak on that main sideline. Brunson hands it off. And they'll pick up a couple there on that first down play. Will the Great Danes. That was uh, Mo Four with the carry there for U Albany. Nothing fancy, straight ahead running. Carl Mofor, a sophomore from Greenbelt, Maryland. Brunson in there for the injured Vincent Testaverde. Second down, about six. Brunson looking for Green, and the pass is incomplete. Oh, well, looks like Green had a step there on the defender. Great recovery by Catley Joseph. That was a tremendous play by Catley to recover on that because you're right, he'd had a step on him. Pass under thrown just a hair and going up in the air there was Green. Could not bring it down. Green coming off two straight 100 yard games. Averages 21 yards per catch. He is a threat to this point. The Black Bears have kept him in check. Even though Testaverde's out of the game, Albany's not uh, backing down one bit. Brunson under pressure, pass is incomplete. Boy, oh boy, if Mosai Nelson had had his head turned around, he might have had six on that play. The ball hit him right in the back. Yeah, Brunson just trying to get out of trouble. Scrambles a little bit, poor throw. You're right, Mosai was looking. That might have been six the other way. Good pressure there from Deshaun Stevens once again. This time, the Great Danes get the punt off. And it's going to go out of bounds. Let's see where they mark that one. All right, so Black Bears going to get the football back with good field position. May not big here in the first half. What motivates us at Casella? I want to help our customers recycle as much as possible. Because I care about the environment and how our company impacts our towns. And at Casella Organics, we find new uses for all sorts of materials. It's hard work. But I'm helping people every day. And that makes me feel like part of the community. A community I care about. So I do everything I can to sustain the resources of our environment. Casella, dependable, caring people, part of your community. Out here, if you have the will, you can lead the way with the all-new Fisher EZV V-Plow. Purpose-built to provide industry-leading features, performance, and efficiency, just like the other V-Plows in our lineup, but in a lightweight design that's ideal for businesses and homeowners using half-ton trucks. A strong yet versatile plow that handles the work and won't back down. The all-new Fisher EZV V-Plow, built for Fisher Nation. For more information, visit fisherplows.com. Bears with excellent field position after the punt by U Albany. Andre Miller into the ball game for the Black Bears, but they're going to keep it on the ground here, and the Black Bears will advance it a couple of yards. Joe Fitzpatrick, the carry there for the Bears. Maine really needs to put together a good drive here. They haven't done anything offensively since they scored their second touchdown. Take some. Eat the second half clock, get it down. It's Patrick from North Yarmouth, Maine, via Chevrolet High School. He's been a 
mainstay for this Black Bear offense the last couple of years. Here's a screen. That's going to be to Ramon Jefferson. He's got good yardage. He's running up the sideline. Jefferson finally tripped up right around the 10 yard line. Or no, that's Andre. No, that is Jefferson with the catch there. And he is tripped up right around the 10 yard line. However, there are flags down. And this one could be brought back. Well designed, but. Holding offense number 69, 10 yard penalty, replay second down. And it will be against the Black Bear. So the hold there against Maine, right in front of us, well set up. You'll see it coming up right there, holding them. Can't do that. Anytime you get your hands on the outside of his shoulder pads, you're going to get called for holding every time. Nice little somersault at the end of that play there by Ramon Jefferson, who is a tremendous athlete. See the flag coming in right there. A costly one for Maine. It's going to bring up second down and 14 here for the Bears. And that pass intended for Andre Miller is going to be incomplete. Good coverage there by Kareem Gibson. He's a redshirt junior out of Johnstown, Pennsylvania. All the points for the Black Bears coming in the first quarter. Maine just cannot get anything going right now. And Albany hanging around on the road. Still just a two possession game. When you have a chance to put a team away, you have to do it. 8-12 left to go here in the first half. Pass is low, incomplete, intended for Blair. All been able to put a little pressure on Ferguson. Had to rush that toss there to Jaquan. Came up short. So the Bears will punt it away once again. Poor pass. Drop ball. Incomplete. Again, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but Maine has to figure this out. Here's the punt by Gelb. Again, high arching kick. Does another great job. Angles it out of bounds near sideline. You expect Maine's defense to hold three and out. And Maine will get the ball back with maybe five, five minutes left on the clock, maybe six. And they're going to keep it on the ground on the first down play and swarmed under there is EB Token Hanks and some extracurricular activity after that play. A loss on first down for you Albany. Great Danes wins here in 2018 coming out of conference as we take a look at this uh, play once again direct snap to EB Token EB Token Hanks and the Black Bears did not fall for that bit of trickery. Mentioned the two wins for Albany. They came against Morgan State and St. Francis. Brunson, the backup quarterback in there, hands it off again. This time, E.B. Token Hanks tries to weave his way upfield. Does pick up about three yards on that play. Low with a nice stick. Now, outside of a game or two, the Black Bear defense has been pretty steady. The loss of Chris Ferguson, the injury to his shoulder earlier this season, derailing the main offense for a few weeks. Off to a good start in this one. Great first quarter for the main offense, but some difficulty here in quarter number two. 6.38 left to go in half number one. Brunson. Back to pass and he is taken down once again. More pressure from Maine. And this time Deshaun Stevens on the scene. Right now, Brunson, the backup quarterback, I mean he's gonna be he doesn't know what's coming out. Like there's everywhere. Stevens taking an inside rush lane from the defensive end spot, and they just don't have an answer. Punt is away. Black Bears are going to have great field position once again. Edwards comes up on the ball and then backs away as the ball trickles out of bounds. 
Bears will have good field position. You see Deshaun Stevens, Sterling Sheffield, the dynamic duo. Stevens now seven sacks. Sheffield seven and a half sacks coming into this ball game. Force fumbles for Sheffield, a pair. Interception for Deshaun Stevens earlier this season. Like Maine's defensive line, sometimes Stevens goes unnoticed, but he's having a first team yeah. all conference year right now. Good look at Deshaun on the main bench right there, taking a little breather after the sack. Jefferson the carry, and good first down pickup there for the Black Bears. We want to see the Black Bears incorporate a more balanced offense. Jefferson coming back certainly will help the Bears in that endeavor, and that's the kind of pickup you want to see on first down. They'll take four, they'll take five, that time seven for the Bears. Yeah, I really don't think Maine needs to get fancy. Like you just said, take four or five yards at a pop. That's all you need to do. Young in motion again. The give to Jefferson. And he pounds his way up to the 41 of UAlbany. It's going to be close to a first down. All right, let's take it down. Take it down to the sideline once again. Andrew Badillo with the latest. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, the running, the three-prong running back attack that Maine has, Dewan, Dewan Sanders, Ramon Jefferson, and Joe Fitzpatrick, was a big key for the offense in this game. You really haven't seen any of those three get going. You've seen a lot of Jefferson, but not a lot of the other two. That big screen pass was wiped out by a penalty. So Maine is definitely going to want to get its run game going if it wants to get its offense going again in the second quarter. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Andrew. Ramon Jefferson. A redshirt freshman, Dewan Sanders, a true freshman for the Black Bears in that backfield. Jefferson getting the call once again. Not much on that first down play. Picks up maybe a yard. Second down and nine for the Black Bears as they look to the near sideline for the next offensive play. And they really don't have to rush through this series of plays. They've got plenty of time. They want to eat the clock. Julian Dunn in motion, got a flag down, and that's going to be picked off by U Albany. And some room to roam there by Kareem Brown. He's at the 40 of Maine, and he'll be tackled at the 30. As getting back there to make the tackle is indeed Julian Dunn. Bad pass there by Ferguson. A flag is down. We'll see if it's against the Black Bears or U Albany. I'd be shocked if this wasn't offside. Ooh, yes. Five yard penalty, replay second down. Well, just when you think the Great Danes might get some momentum, a penalty takes away that interception. Yeah, offside on the right side of the line there. Clear to see. And Kareem Brown stepping in front of Belcher, but all for naught once again. Penalties will kill you, and they always seem to happen at the wrong time. Second down and four now for the Bears after that offside penalty. They sling it to the left side. It's going to be Edwards. He's got the first down and a little more. Run out of bounds at the 24 yard line. Black Bears on the move. Nice catch by Edwards, but what really makes this play go is you got uh, Juwan Blair on the outside. You'll watch him come in. He makes a great block right there and allows Edwards to get to the sideline. Yeah, Jaquan with a little interference there, giving Electric Ernie an extra half second, and he turned it into a first down. From the 24, Ferguson hands it to Jefferson, straight up the middle, breaks the tackle, breaks through the line, backs his way down to about the 16-yard line. Good run there by Ramon. Exactly what May needs to be doing. Straight up the middle, nothing fancy. And it's really important right here that they protect the football. Running backs need to cover it with two hands when they go into the end zone, or excuse me, into the line of scrimmage. Yeah, first down run of about eight yards. That really frees up your offense to do a lot here in this uh, second down and short, but they will keep it on the ground. This time Jefferson hit in the backfield, breaks that tackle, and I think he's got a first down as he squirms his way to the 13-yard line. 
And when you talk with Joe Harris Simiak, Mark, as we have done, you speak so highly of Ramon Jefferson, his athletic ability, his potential going forward. And he also talks about how the other coaches talk about Ramon Jefferson. Yeah, exactly right. He is, uh, he's got explosive speed. And even though he's short, he is built. He's 210 pounds, he can motor. As you can see, we're under the two minute mark. First and 10 for the Bears. And we got some movement on the uh, line for the Black Bears. That may be against Jaquan Blair. No, we got a timeout called timeout here by Maine. May. First uh, timeout of the half. So the Black Bears will huddle up, talk a little offense. Across the way, you Albany will huddle up and talk a little defense. Let's take a look at the standings in the CAA. As we can see there, I mentioned earlier, Towson, the last remaining undefeated team. Stony Brook at four and one, and then it's a slew of three and one teams, including Maine, Delaware, Elon, and James Madison. Rhode Island, William and Mary at 500. And then the, the bottom of the league, Black Bears will play Richmond in a couple of weeks. Towson next week and then the final game of the season right here at Alphonse Stadium. We'll have it for you. Elon in town. So the Bears still in the thick of things there, Mark. Yes. But this is a game right here. They got to have. They got to have this one. Can't worry about Elon or Townsend next week. Get this win and then we'll worry about the next week. One game at a time. Andre Miller in the ball game. It's going to be Jefferson again, and he lurches forward. Boy, oh boy, I like to see this uh, action here offensively. Some would say it's the Bears getting a little conservative, but it's very effective right now, yeah. running Jefferson right up the gut. You're getting you're getting seven yards a, a play. Why wouldn't you keep doing it? You got plenty of time on the clock. You don't want to leave any time for Albany. Second down and three for Chris Ferguson and the Black Bears. They give it to Jefferson again. He breaks it outside. Jefferson is in the end zone. Touchdown, Black Bears. To your point, talking about Coach Harris Simiak and the way he talked about Jefferson, there you see the talent right there and why he is so excited to have this uh, individual on his team. That was a great cut. So Ramon Jefferson instrumental in that drive by the Black Bears. It ends up. In the end zone for you, Maine, their third touchdown of the ball game. Play designed to go up the middle, nothing there. Bouncing it out to the left side, Ramon. He rolls into the end zone. Black Bears up by 20. Kenny Doak trying to make it 21. And he will. Extra point good. And a great momentum builder. Good to see the Black Bears with some sustained offense late here in this first half. Exactly right. They drove the ball very well. They executed. They ran it. And that was a great play to end it right there. A little inside guard trap. He busted outside for six. So this homecoming crowd here at the University of Maine. Feeling pretty good about this one. There it is. There's the trap and he just busted outside. Don't forget, coming up at the half, we'll check in with Maine head coach Joe Harris-Simiak. Andrew Badillo will have that discussion down on the turf here at Alphonse Stadium. Also got an inside Black Bear feature coming up. Get you some first half highlights, some numbers as well. And we'll take a look at the Maine men's basketball team, of course, under Head coach Richard Barron, his first year, taking over for Bob Walsh. Of course, uh, Coach Barron has had a lot of success with the women's program here at the University of Maine. 109 left to go here in the first half. Doak, the boot, angles it to the uh, towards the far sideline. Ball goes out of bounds, but this time through the end zone. Good kick. So Albany will get the ball here with not much time to work with. Even though there's only a minute and nine seconds left on the clock, it's important again that Maine doesn't give up something cheap right here. Anything can happen. And for all of Albany's struggles here in 2018, 
still winless in the CAA at 0 and 4. They are averaging about 26 points coming into this ball game. The Black Bears shutting them out here in the first half. Incomplete pass there intended for Mo for. Second and 10 here for Albany. So good showing for Maine here in this first half. You want to see it continue in half number two. Tough well, foe up next week in Towson. I'm surprised Albany has thrown the ball right here. Where they on the first, you know, first and ten. Makes no sense with a minute left, just like we said. Can't make any mistakes. Here's Brunson's pass, and it's gonna land on the main sideline, incomplete. Pass intended for Donovan McDonald. Keeps going like this. Maine's going to get the ball back with 45 seconds. And if history is, tells us anything, it, Maine's not the type of team that's going to set on the ball even with 45 seconds left. Black Bears one and one when leading at the half here in 2018. Had a lot of success when leading at the half over the last eight years. Carried there by Molfor. He's going to pick up about 70 yards, but the Great Danes will have to punt, and the Black Bears second time out of the half. very smartly calling a timeout here with time out. 50 seconds left to go in this first half. Let's see what kind of field position results from this punt here by U Albany. Since November 19th of 2011, the Black Bears are 28 and 7 when leading at the half. Big lead for Maine in this one. Yeah, the uh, Black Bears playing a team with a son of a former NFL quarterback this week, Vincent Testaverde, the son of Vinny Testaverde. Next week, they're going to play the younger brother of a current NFL quarterback, That's a right. Flacco. Correct. Up next for the Black Bears. Short punt. Takes a slight main bounce there. So the Black Bears will have excellent field position here. Chris Ferguson, the quarterback for the Black Bears, good first half for him. 12 for 18, 151 yards, the one touchdown on the first offensive play. He's been sacked twice. He's going to swing it to the left side. Ernest Edwards moves it upfield. That'll be a first down for the Black Bears. 11 yard pickup. Black Bears in the hurry up. 33 seconds left to go. I got to believe they're going to take a shot for the end zone. Low snap. Edwards fires left to Fitzpatrick, who gets out of bounds. So that'll stop the clock with 20 seconds left. Nice little swing pass to Fitzpatrick, and he does a tremendous job getting out of bounds to stop the clock. Mentioned the crosswind here today. It's coming directly across the field from Mahaney Diamond towards the press box here at Alphonse Stadium. Of course, we've seen Kenny Doak nail a 52-yarder. That happened in a game-winning situation against Villanova a few weeks ago. Bears trying to get in field goal position. And the pass is low. Good job there by Blair to stay away from that pass. And let's take a look at that Kenny Doe kick. Tremendous way to end our first broadcast of the season. 52 yards, just over the crossbar. And the Black Bears go nuts on the turf here at Alphonse Stadium, tying the all time record. Set back in the mid 70s by Jack Leggett. He's a great baseball player here as well for you, Ben. Kicker, defensive back. Pass complete to Blair. It's good enough for a first down. And stops the clock momentarily. Maine doesn't have to use a timeout. You might see a spike right here. Got to get to the line. 11 seconds. Ferguson the snap, and he does spike it. So the clock stops with 10 seconds. Ball at the 33 yard line of U Albany. And you see Kenny Doak warming up on the sideline. One week after that game winner against Villanova, Doak did it on the road. Game winning kick. 
Last second kick against the Rhodey Rams. I would like to see Maine take one shot at the end zone right here. You got 10 seconds, plenty of time, and you have one timeout left. Well, they're going to keep it on the ground. They give it to Fitzpatrick. He'll advance it up to the 29 yard line. So from here, this would be a 46 yard boot by Kenny Doak. And the Black Bears call time with three this seconds the left. Time the half. 30 second time out. And whether or not Kenny Doak is able to make this field goal or not, with a 21 point lead, this is a good test. Absolutely. We've seen him make a couple of game winning field goals. Uh, he had a little tailwind in that uh, 52 yarder. Not much. Um, but these are always good tests because there's going to be other big situations down the stretch here for the Black Bears. They've got two more road games. Season finale against a good team, Elon. So uh, it's just another confidence builder here potentially for Kenny Doak. And this isn't a chip shot either. This oh. is a 47 yard field goal. You got some, as you can see the flag blowing across there. You got some crosswind to deal with. Good look from the opposite end zone behind Doak. And that's a line drive kick, and he hooks it. And it is no good. So a test indeed, but uh, the Black Bears fail in that instance. However, a solid first half for the Black Bears. As they score three times and they lead the Albany Great Danes by a score of 21 to nothing as the Black Bears try to get to four and one in conference play. Going to hear from Andrew Badillo. He's going to be uh, catching up with Maine head coach Joe Harrisimiak here at the end of this first half before the Black Bears get into that locker room as they uh, warm up a little bit on this chilly October day. Let's go down to Andrew now. He's got the coach. Thanks a lot, Jim. Joe, uh, pretty good half for you guys. Offense exploded in the first quarter. What happened in the second, though? Things sort of slowed down on, on offense for you guys. Yeah, I think just going against quality defense, too. You know, they, they do a lot of good things. But I think we're just uh, just not being consistent. Chris has got to throw it better. Um, I think we've had some looks, but ultimately we just got to play better. Ramon's, uh, you know, running really well. The old line's doing a pretty good job. So we just got to get back to running it. Um, but we'll see, you know, we got to play another half football. Corey Hetherman said that the key on defense was going to be limiting their slot receivers. How do you think the defense did in doing that in this first half? Uh, very well. You know, I think we're, we play an aggressive style of defense, um, you know, doing a good job with, with the type of coverage. And then ultimately, I think we're really getting to the quarterback, which is helping them out big time. So, again, we just got to keep playing. We, we've been in this situation before, so the message at halftime is we just got to keep, keep it rolling. Everyone's talking about the weather and when the rain is going to come, the snow, if it does come in the second half. When that does happen, does the game plan change? Bring it on. We're ready. Thanks a lot, Joe. Appreciate it. Right. Guys, back to you. All right, that interview here at the half with head coach Joe Harris-Simiak brought to you by Sea Dog Brewing Company. All right, we're going to step aside here. Coming up, it is the halftime reports. Bears rolling here on homecoming this afternoon in Orono. Best way I could describe working with Ham and Lumber, our relationship is like working with a group of friends. Their service is excellent in the store. Uh, you walk in, there's always somebody there waiting to help you. Delivery, on-site help, whatever is needed, they're there for us. Aggressive on the pricing, they have all the materials and products we need. Their sales service is exceptional. They deliver everything when we expect it to be delivered. It always comes back to service with Ham and Lumber being the most important thing. Good afternoon and welcome to the Pride of Maine Black Bear Marching Band Halftime Show. we got a great show you for this afternoon, a little bit of school spirit, some uh, popular songs, and the introduction of our homecoming court. We're going to start with the fanfare based on the Stein song called the Stein Song Fanfare. Go ahead.
Spain, and that is the crowning of royalty. And I've been most delighted because when one thinks about these sorts of experiences or award ceremonies, your mind obviously goes to, well, isn't it what we've always known about? But in fact, we have so many different students who uh, engage in this opportunity and so many students are nominated and so many different students from so many different organizations come to the front. And it's just a real delight to see uh, students across the spectrum of uh, classes, majors, hometowns, interests, experiences, and we just love it. It's just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And to have the president here today makes it even that much more delightful. And President Farini Mundi is a person who has become so involved at the University of Maine, and she understands how important it is to have rituals and traditions and how strong that makes a place like the University of Maine. So today it's wonderful to have here as our partner, President Joan Farini Mundi. Thank you so much, Vice President Dana. It's great to be here and to be with you. I wish we were in person, but we will be soon. And you know, when I, when I got here and learned that we were reinstituting this tradition, I had the same thoughts that, that Robert Dana had. You know, well, I wonder if, you know, is this an old fashioned kind of pulling us back? But, but looking at these eight fabulous um, nominees today, the candidates uh, for, this, uh, for this honor, I have to agree with, with Dean Dana. They represent students from Maine and students from far beyond Maine, all across the board in terms of the majors that they have uh, chosen and the, the fields that they represent and fascinating backgrounds. I look forward to actually meeting everybody when we can be together. And I would just point out that not only are we introducing some um, older traditions in very new ways with very new ways of thinking about them, you know, with our focus on diversity and inclusion and everybody being able to feel a part of things um, right at the core. We're also introducing new technologies, right? Since when has anybody crowned, um, crowned the, uh, the homecoming, homecoming honorees and royalty um, virtually? But, but we uh, are doing that. And so again, congratulations to all of you um, for being such fantastic participants in the University of Maine community, for uh, having the spirit that, that we really expect of Black Bears and uh, for being a part of this terrific event. Hi, I'm Amber Hagen, your 2019 Homecoming Royalty. I would like to welcome and congratulate the 2020 University of Maine Homecoming Court. It is our pleasure to introduce the candidates and the student organizations they represent. Allison Swede, Panhellenic Council. Lars Johnson, UMaine D&D. Caitlin Robinson, Alternative Breaks. Logan Pratt, Share. Blaze Vale, University of Maine Student Government, Delaney Woodard, Mainly Voices, Juno Buendia, University of Maine Singers, and Emily Laughlin, All Maine Women. Based on their campus involvement and UMaine spirit, it is with great joy we announce our 2020 Homecoming Royalty, Emily McLaughlin and Juno Buendia. Juno Buendia, congratulations. And to Emily McLaughlin, congratulations. Congratulations to the homecoming king and queen. We'll continue on with the music in our production with our school fight song, For Maine.
and moving along with our halftime show, in 2011, Lady Gaga had a wonderful hit called Born This Way. We wish to feature the dance team in Majorettes with our version of Born This Way. Continue on. The weather kind of pooped out on us here, but we're going to continue on with an Elton John song that came out in 1983 called I'm Still Standing. Nice job, and we conclude our halftime performance for you today with the song that makes Maine the way life should be, the Stein Song.
Go Blue! See you next time. For more than 168 years, Bangor Savings Bank has stood by its employees, customers, and communities. And we're not stopping now. We will be here for you. Today, and every day ahead. There's still time left in this year's building season, and Hammond Lumber Company is here to help. From free estimating and planning, to design and drafting services, and a wide variety of products, as well as complete home and garage packages, Hammond showrooms are open with CDC-recommended procedures in place, or browse online and place your order by phone. Delivery is free within striking distance of any Hammond location statewide. Keep your project on schedule with help from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. We are back here at Alphonse Stadium. Jim Churchill along with former Black Bear Mark Coots, Andrew Badillo down on the sidelines as we are about set to get the second half underway. Black Bears with the first possession of the ball game. Of course, they had that 77-yard strike from Chris Ferguson to Ernest Edwards to get the ball rolling here this afternoon. Black Bears up 21 to nothing as we get half number two underway. So Kenny Doak will be kicking it off here to you, Albany. And that ball is going to be taken in about the seven yard line. And pretty good return here by U Albany. Finally, run out of bounds there is Deb Holmes, the freshman wideout. And let's take a look at those keys once again here, Mark. How are the Black Bears faring? Well, they certainly listened to Coach Harasimiak about penalties. They've only been penalized twice for 15 yards, so they're doing great in that area. And on the turnovers, they haven't turned the ball over, and I think we can all agree that they just did not take uh, Albany for granted to start the game, which all three are happening, and I, think I would expect the same to happen in the second half. Three for three for the Black Bears. All right, Brunson, the quarterback, the backup. Vincent Testaverde injured in the first half. Incomplete pass to start the second half here for U Albany. So second down and 10. Again, U Albany, negative five in rushing in half number one. Only 12 yards of passing. Pure, unadulterated dominance by the Black Hole defense. It's unbelievable. Seven yards of total offense in the first half for Albany. From the shotgun, Brunson's going to hand it off to E.B. Token Hanks, and he'll take it up over the 30-yard line to about the 33. So it'll be third down, about five to go here for the Great Danes. Albany struggling here in 2018. Two and five overall, but both of their wins coming out of conference. 0 and 4 in CAA play coming into this one. Black Bears trying to advance to 4 and 1 and stay in the hunt. Maybe Token Hanks in motion. Brunson fires left. Pass incomplete. No flag. Great defensive play there once again by the main defensive backfield. Catley Joseph has been instrumental here for the Black Bears this afternoon. Yep, a little slant inside. Joseph takes it away, gets his hand in there. Nice play. Main secondary has played very well today. Black Bears blocked the punt in the first half. Albany gets this one away. Ball rolls down to the 31 yard line picked up there by Maine. Now that's a that's a dangerous play when you're in the middle of about uh, three or four U Albany Great da Great Danes, but uh, and it doesn't need to take place. All right, let's look at the uh, scoreboard in the CAA Rhode Island leading William and Mary. Black Bears lost to William and Mary last week. That game down in Kingston, Rhode Island, New Hampshire. Leading Villanova on the road 17 to nothing. There's two uh, historically great programs uh, going at it, having tough seasons later on. Towson at Delaware and Stony Brook taking on James Madison. Townsend Delaware will be a great game today. Ferguson back to work. Ramon Jefferson back to work. Boy, did he finish the first half strong. 
He was the key ingredient in that final scoring drive for the Black Bears. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, Maine just, you know, they get that rushing game, keep it going, use all three running backs, eat some clock. Jefferson now 12 carries for 60 yards, so five yards a carry. Has the one touchdown. Black Bears can keep him healthy. Keep him working and balance out this offense. That'll be great. There's going to be an interception by U Albany. Black Bears, little play action there, getting greedy. And stepping into the passing lane is Levi Matheny. Well, floated that ball a little bit. And I know you don't want to get conservative. You know, you still want to keep your foot on the gas pedal, but. This one had no chance. Nope. Line, good read by the linebacker. Gets back in coverage. Yeah, I mean, there and were Jeff three Albany players in the vicinity there. Yeah, Ferguson really hasn't thrown the ball very well for about a quarter and a half. I wonder if his shoulder might be bothering him. We were just raving about the Black Bears in the turnover category. Yeah, I know. It should have <laughs> been quiet. Am I seeing a little snow falling? Yes, here? you are. I don't want to, but I guess I am. Pass is complete. First down, still on his feet. Finally, unable to keep his feet there. Number 84, Gerard Reeves. So, a little momentum here for you, Albany. And a Black Bear down on the field. Brunson, the backup, right on the money here. Great location with that pass. And Reeves did everything he could to stay on his feet, pick up a couple more yards. You see the frustration there, but as we take a look at the uh, training staff of University of Maine Athletics checking in on the injured player, they have him surrounded. We cannot see who that is on his knees right now. Black Bears dealing with some injuries. Charles Mitchell. Out of this ball game, Micah Wright missing uh, from the offense. The injury to Jeff Devon, the senior defensive back from Pennsylvania. 5'11", 190, coming off under his own power. So for Maine's defense right now, we've, we've said it a lot, but they need to do it again. You hate to have to keep calling on them, but it's very important that they dig in and uh, don't give up and give any points up to uh, Albany. And Brunson trying to gain some confidence, obviously, after, after the turnover. Great Danes with great field position, and he's got to feel better after that completion. Ball was perfectly thrown. Light starting to take effect a little bit here at Alphonse Stadium now. Brunson going to the air again. Nope. Pressure coming. Nobody open. Tucks it under, and he'll lose a yard on that first down play. Second down and nine coming up for Albany. Nice play by Whitaker. You know, main secondary has got him covered. He has no place to go, has to tuck it, and Whitaker's there to make the tackle. Well, the Black Bear defense has been outstanding here this afternoon. Trying to deny the Great Danes once again is EB Token Hanks. Going to find very little running room there. Does manage to pick up three. Third down and seven coming here for Albany. Twelve meetings, or this is the twelfth meeting between these two programs. Black Bears lead the all-time series six to five. Have struggled here at home against the Great Danes. They're two and four against Albany here at Alphonse Stadium. I remember a game. Several years ago, there was great anticipation for the Black Bears season. It was a Thursday night game under the lights. Huge crowd, and the Black Bears lost to Albany three to nothing. Brunson across the middle. He's got his man. No flags down. Pass completion. Dev Holmes on the receiving end. First down, U Albany. This is not how Joe Harrisimiak and the Black Bear coaching staff wanted it. Not to start in the locker room. No, not to start the second half. Brunson, the word for his center. Signals continue to come in from that Albany sideline across the way. They've lost a few of the students. They have uh, 
evaporated from the, the stands across the way. Cold afternoon. We get back in those warm dormitories. Come back to study. Of course. Saturday afternoon. Absolutely. Brunson, a little mix up there, and that play does not work for you, Albany. You could see a bit discombobulated in that uh, backfield. And a great defensive play there for the Bears. Richard Carr, Johnny on the spot. Yeah, he's one-on-one -on -one getting blocked. He gets rid of his blocker, and he comes up and makes a great stick. Kaboom. Big play, big play. Second down and goal now for the Great Danes. As they go in the wrong direction on that play. Second and goal from the 12. Brunson under center. A couple of fakes. Now lofts one towards the pylon, and it's going to be too high. Pass intended there for L.J. Wesneski. Good to see Wesneski back into the ball game. He was down for a period in that first half, his head hitting the turf very hard, and no chance there for Wesneski on that attempt. No ball thrown way over his head. He couldn't catch. He's a big boy, too. But there was no way he was making that catch. You say big. 6'2", 211, redshirt sophomore. Third and goal from the 12. Brunson, he's going to be taken down once again. Coming from the blind side, Kayon Whitaker. Having a terrific game, number nine for Maine. Full motor going, doesn't stop. You'll see him come right up the right up the middle. Keeps coming. We could see it coming. Brunson could not. No, that was the blind side. I think that came from. So now a field goal attempt. You Albany trying to get on the board any way they can in this ball game, trailing at 21 to nothing. So it's going to be a 39-yard attempt. And the kick is up, and it is good. Through the uprights, Ethan Stark with the field goal there for you, Albany. So the Great Danes on the board, but the Black Bears in control, trying to get the offense going here in the second half. 21 to three, our score. This is Maine football. What motivates us at Casella? I want to help our customers recycle as much as possible. Because I care about the environment and how our company impacts our towns. And at Casella Organics, we find new uses for all sorts of materials. It's hard work. But I'm helping people every day. And that makes me feel like part of the community. A community I care about. So I do everything I can to sustain the resources of our environment. Casella, dependable, caring people, part of your community. Out here, if you have the will, you can lead the way with the all-new Fisher Easy V V-Plow. Purpose built to provide industry-leading features, performance, and efficiency, just like the other V-Plows in our lineup, but in a lightweight design that's ideal for businesses and homeowners using half-ton trucks. A strong yet versatile plow that handles the work and won't back down. The all-new Fisher Easy V V-Plow, built for Fisher Nation. For more information, visit fisherplows.com. I cannot believe it's snowing. I should. Been here enough to know it snows in October. Black Bears, a couple of road games coming up. We'll be back here on November 17th for the regular season finale. Black Bears will be hosting Elon. Team in the upper heights of the CAA standings. Here's the kickoff. And it's going to be taken by Ernest Edwards, feeling his way up the field, has a little room, zigs and zags his way to the 30. Pretty good return there by Electric Ernie. Excellent return. He has a really good sense of finding the holes on those returns. You'll watch him hesitate a little bit, and he just finds a little crevice, and he gets up in there. Jim Churchill and Mark Coots here in the Dunkin' Donuts broadcast booth. America runs on Dunkin'. Andrew Badillo down on the sideline. 
A great crew for our UMaine football broadcasts. As I mentioned, one more coming up, that final game of the regular season. Of course, uh, many television broadcasts of UMaine hockey as well coming up. Here's the pass to Blair. Blair breaks a tackle. And he's going to be run out of bounds at about the 41 yard line. Good pick up there for May. It's a first down. 11 yard completion for the Bears. Nice safe play. Just a little uh, screen pass out to the left to Blair. Good block. Does a nice job making defenders miss. Gets the first down. Good block there by Andre Miller. Former Old Town Coyote. And uh, on the reverse here, the Black Bears going to pick up another first down. Little jitterbug on the sideline across the way. Devin Young, the redshirt freshman, is out of Binghamton, New York. Carry there for Young, and they'll move the chains again. Great little stutter step. And when you do that to a linebacker, he's in no man's land. He proved it right there. Black Bears showing their versatility here offensively. Belcher in motion this time. Edwards, Blair to the near side. Pass to Edwards. Blair trying to get a block in there. Edwards gets around one defender, but closing quickly there for U Albany is one of their line line linebackers, Brady Wisniewski. Easy for me to say. <laughs> well, Maine's keeping it simple, and that's what they should be doing. Ball right at midfield, third and one. Black Bears. Trying to pick up their third first down on this drive. 740 left to go. Here in the third quarter. 21 to 3 our score. It looks like we had some contact there. Between the center and the nose guard. Or nose tackle, I should say. And let's see what the call is. Looks like it's going to go Ball against pass. the Black Bears. Ball start. 62. Yeah, false start there by the center, Michael Jaraci. He's a freshman from Bel Air, Maryland. Almost looked like he reached out yeah. and touched the uh, defender. That or he's pointing. Maybe he was just pointing out uh, blocking assignments, making sure everybody was on the same page. So that sets the Black Bears back five yards. Jefferson to the left of Ferguson. Three receivers to the right. Now Jefferson moves wide to the left along with Young. Ferguson fires low and a pass well off the mark intended for Blair. And the Bears will have to kick it away. That might have been just a mix up between Ferguson and Blair because Blair was nowhere. I think Ferguson thought he was going to do a curl or a hook right there and he just kept going. Snow picking up a little bit here at Alphonse Stadium. The way this third quarter has started, now it's only half a quarter, but you don't want this to continue. The Black Bears have not played well through the first almost eight minutes of this second half. Kick away by Geld. Touched a little bit there after the punt, but no penalty and a fair catch taken at the 25 yard line. Fair catch there by Donovan McDonald. Good start to uh, this possession for U Albany. Mofor with a first down pickup there for the Great Danes. Yep, maybe out of bounds, just shy of that first down marker. They have jumped the gun there just a little bit. It's going to be second down and very short. Only a yard to go. May did a good job stringing that play up, but they just missed two tackles. These are the times where you really got to dig down and start playing better. You cannot let this game get away from you. Mofer again, hole on the right side, up and over a Black Bear defender. He's got the first down this time. And on the tackle there for the Bears, Manny Patterson. All right, let's go down to the sideline here. Andrew Badia with a report. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, the snow actually starting to fall down here on Alphonse Stadium. 
Head coach or offensive coordinator Nick Charlton mentioned that when Albany gets in rhythm on offense, they like to go in the hurry up. You saw it last possession. So with time running out here in the third quarter and behind a couple possessions, look for Albany to really push the tempo, even though that Testa Verde is not in the game. Guys, back to you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Tempo being picked up here by the Great Danes. They're also picking up some yardage on the ground, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Maine, I, I don't want to say that they're playing soft, but I, they might be playing a little bit conservative. Keep the plays in front of you. Don't give up anything big. Brunson doing a decent job managing the game. They're going to keep it on the ground again. But also for Maine, that's not what brought you here either. You know, you're used to going after it and getting after it, and I would hope they get after it again. And I think they will. Three-yard pickup, third down and one. Mike Bears should be able to key on number 21, the running back Mofor, as Brunson steps back into the shotgun. And they're going to hand it off to Mofor again. He's got the first down, still going, still going, carrying Black Bears, being pushed by his teammates. Finally, the whistle blows. But about an eight or nine yard pickup there for Carl Mofer. Albany got a good coaching session there at halftime because they come out fired up. Just a straight ahead. Good hole. Just pushing. Puts his head down. He's a tough runner. Good hole created there by that Albany offensive line. Pass to the near side. Completed to Dev Holmes. Not much running room. After the catch, he'll pick up three on that play. Devon and Joseph working together. Get rid of two, two defenders, come up, make the play together. Kylie Joseph, we've called his name a few times today. Yes, indeed. He's played well. Homecoming weekend here at the University of Maine had a great tailgate crowd. It's fun to watch the uh, fans uh, line up. Long line to get into Alphonse Stadium today. Here's a long pass from Brunson, and it's going to be incomplete. Pass left short. I think that uh, if that one was a little uh, closer to being uh, a catchable pass. Absolutely. The contact is. and the defender not looking back could have had a penalty there, but they escaped the dagger right there. If that ball's on on the money, that's six points. Jeff Devon back in coverage there for the Black Bears. Cold, windy day here at Alphonse Stadium. But as a former football player, I'd much rather take the snow over the rain on a cold day. Yeah, once you get wet. Yeah, forget about and it. And it's chilly. It's just about over at that point. Now, whistles blow. And we got a timeout called time here Albany. by First U Albany. Third down and six. Coming up for the Great Danes. They've scored the only points here in the second half. Field goal for U Albany after Black Bears, after the Black Bears took a 21-0 lead into the locker room. You know, uh, if you're U Albany, that's a, it's a tough time to take a timeout right there with three minutes left in the third quarter, but evidently they didn't like the look they had from Maine's defense and they wanted to talk about it. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for uh, the main Black Bears of course last week. That's a game. I hope we're not looking back at Mark a 27 to 20 loss on the road to William and Mary a team near the bottom of the standings in the conference. Uh, of course uh, the Great Danes here today Black Bears leading at 21 to 3 coming up a couple road games. Black Bears are indeed road warriors at Towson the number one team in the conference right now. Then a game at Richmond before finishing up here at home. Black Bears trying to improve to four and one in CA action here in this game against the Albany Great Danes. Third down and six for Brunson and Albany. Here is Mofer again and he's got a first down. Credit the Albany offensive line. They are having their way here in recent plays against that main D. They certainly didn't pack it in second half. They come out ready to play. And the Great Danes in that hurry up. 
Brunson rolls to his right, looks back across the middle. He's got a man near the end zone. That's Wisniewski and a flag coming in. And another one coming in. Three flags on the field. And they are all in the direction of Deshaun Stevens, who was on the coverage there of Wesneski. That's going to be pass interference. I got to see this. You didn't like the call, Mark. I'm not sure that. Oh, oh. no, Mo, my bad. I need new glasses. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Had a bad angle up here. Of course. You know, again, here we go, penalties. That, that actually isn't a bad penalty because if he doesn't do that, that's six points. So as it is, it's a 15-yard penalty. We'll take it. And, you know, in college, you're taught that. It's only a 15-yard right. penalty. NFL, different story. Different, yeah, exactly right. It's a spot foul. The ball would be at about the one or two-yard line. Bananas. Catching bananas doing some uh, gymnastics down nice. there on the sideline. He never misses a game. He's probably the most comfortable being in the uh, in the stadium here today. That pass is going to be too strong out of the end zone, but I think that incomplete pass created there by more pressure from that main defense. And Sterling Sheffield in there once again. He took a hit. You'll see Sheffield coming off the corner, takes it right at the bottom of his feet. You, know, you get you tackle down near the, the ankles and the knees, it's easy to twist them. Second down. Ten yards to go for U Albany. Trying to get their first touchdown of the afternoon. Here's Mofer again. More space up the middle. Another hole created there by that Albany offensive line. And a six yard pickup for Carl Mofer. You know, Mofer is a big, big individual. Again, just straightforward, moving his legs. Getting some good, decent height size holes to run through as well. Third and four for all you Albany. Big play here for the Black Bear defense. Trying to limit the damage here, keep Albany to a field goal attempt. Albany may go for it on fourth down, even if they come up short here, which they will, as they will mark the ball after that completed pass at about the five and a half yard line. So it's going to be fourth and about a half a yard. And if you're you, Albany, what do you got to lose? Uh, absolutely. I'd give the ball to 21, and I think Maine knows that Maine needs to stick eight guys in the box right here. Blackbeard's got to be careful. This Albany offense is capable. They don't show it all that much against the Maine defense in the first half, but they have throughout this 2018 season. They score here, and uh, you got a two-possession ball game once again. They stack the on box. the ground. They will not get the first down. Black Bears keying in on number 21. Carl Mofor and he is denied. And the Black Bears will take over on downs. Great stand here by the main defense as they collect around Carl Mofor. He comes up short on the first down attempt. The Black Bears get the ball back, leading it by 18. The best way I could describe working with Ham and Lumber, our relationship is like working with a group of friends. Their service is excellent in the store. Uh, you walk in, there's always somebody there waiting to help you. Delivery, on-site help, whatever is needed, they're there for us. Aggressive on the pricing, they have all the materials and products we need. Their sales service is exceptional. They deliver everything when we expect it to be delivered. It always comes back to service with Ham and Lumber being the most important thing. First and 10 for the Black Bears. As they take over on downs, they're gonna keep it on the ground here. Ramon Jefferson trying to break it to the outside, but he's gonna be swarmed under after uh, getting the ball back to the original line of scrimmage. 
So it's going to be second down and 10. This copyrighted telecast is the property of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, under rights granted by the University of Maine. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, reproduction, or other dissemination or use of this telecast or any part of it without the express written consent of Black Bear Sports Properties, LLC, is prohibited. Second and 10 for Maine, deep in their own territory. Pass to the left, Blair has it, and he'll pick up about four yards on that play. Nice safe pass right there again. We've said that a lot in the second half, but I think that makes a lot of sense. Get it in the, get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. I will say though, that was another low pass by Ferguson. He's done that quite a bit. After firing in that first pass, that was dead on for a touchdown. Ferguson, of course, the injured shoulder earlier this season. Keeping him out of action for just about three games. Shotgun, give to Jefferson, and he is met by a train wearing number 45. That's Levi Matheny. Nothing doing. Nothing doing, great read. By the linebacker comes up, makes a great hit. So it's going to be fourth down and six for Maine. As the final seconds wind down here in the third quarter, Black Bears will kick it from the other end. When we come back, Black Bears sputtering a bit here in the third quarter. However, Maine on top in this one, 21 to three here on Homecoming Weekend. Do you know your Maine dairy farmers? Chances are we're a lot like you. We are parents, grandparents. We are small business owners. We are a part of our communities. We are your neighbors. We are undeniably dairy. Hammond Lumber Company has everything you need for your home improvement projects. A wide selection of Energy Star rated windows, high R value insulated doors, and top quality insulation and weather stripping. Hammond showrooms are open with CDC recommended procedures in place. Or browse Hammond's website and place your order by phone. Curbside pickup is available and delivery is free within striking distance of any Hammond location. Prepare your home for any type of weather with help from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Twenty-one to three, the lead from Maine. Good field position here for Albany. Long pass, right sideline. Flags are down, and this could be another penalty against Maine. It will be. So we went over the keys at the beginning of the game, Mark. Yep. The Black Bears nailed all three of those keys in the first half, but here in the second half, things have gone awry. Pass interference, as you can see right here, against you, Maine. As uh, Richard Carr, pardon me, Catley Joseph riding the receiver down that sideline. So they advance the football up to the 33 yard line. So a 10 yard penalty there against the Black Bears. If you're going to be successful playing football, there are three phases of the game that you have to own, and one of them is no penalties. Third quarter stats. Will Brunson, the quarterback, five for 16 for 32 yards. They go back to the running game here on first down after the penalty by the Black Bears. You know, teams today are just too good to be giving them extra chances to score on you. EB Token Hanks with a carry on that first down, gains a yard. EB Token Hanks. Nine carries now for 16 yards. As the snow picks up. I think we skipped the rain part here this afternoon, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. And that's good. Again, I'd much rather play in the snow than the rain. Maybe Token Hanks getting the call once again, gains a couple. Third down and seven here for the Great Danes. Vincent Testaverde, the starting quarterback, 
before he left due to injury was three for seven with one interception through for just 12 yards. His dad, Vinny Testaverde, in the house here today. Brunson across the middle, diving attempt there by McDonald off his fingertips. Good effort. No connection, and it's going to be fourth down. That was going to be a tough catch, but that was a good throw, and that almost came up with the, with the play. So la laid out for it, just couldn't get his fingers on it. With this uh, point of the ball game and the score as it is, four down territory here for the Great Danes. So Brunson back in shotgun formation, three wide outs to the left. EB Token Hanks to his right. And he's going to try to take it himself. And oh my goodness. Ooh, we're going to get a flag here. And it's going to go against Maine. What a hit there by Deshaun Stevens. But it may have been with the helmet and in the wrong spot there by Stevens. The flag came out from the referee in the backfield for U Albany. As you can see through the snowflakes there, Brunson, quick decision, and Stevens. Coming from Brunson's left. Doesn't it look like he leads with his shoulder, not not with his head? Get a better look here. Uh, mm, right near the chin and the yeah, face close. of the quarterback. Official still talking it over down on the turf. That's probably one that could go either way. 13-21. Targeting defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. The play is under review. All right, so the targeting does stand. The microphone. Is my mic on? Oh, <laughs> <We're just laughs> asking if this mic is on. It is now, but the uh, targeting stands, so Deshaun Stevens is disqualified for the remainder of this game. And you see him uh, walk down the sideline with Steve Jones, long time member of the equipment room here at the University of Maine. It's so cold the snow is so much that Jonesy actually put pants on. Exactly. Jonesy was here before I got here. <laughs> See the enforcer? What? Security? Yeah. Well, too bad. He's played a heck of a game and like we said, that was not uh, him trying to lead with his helmet. Unfortunate. And he's, he's a key cog in Maine's defense. All right, the snow really coming down now here at Alphonse Stadium, Albany with some life. Here's E.B. Token Hanks. He slices his way through the main defense, tackled at about the 11-yard line. So he'll pick up four yards on that first down play. And the Great Danes are knocking on the door, but we do have another flag down on the field. Thought that might be penalty where they threw it. I mean, uh, excuse me, holding penalty where they threw that flag way out on the edge. No, nope, maybe it's an illegal block on the offense. 15 yard penalty. Replay first down. Anthony Hayes, our referee here today. So illegal block against the Great Danes. Going to set them back. Is yes. a gift we'll gladly take. They march off 15 yards. So the Great Danes in reverse, at least momentarily. First down and 25. Here's the give to E.B. Token Hank straight up the middle, met by the Black Bears around the 25, so they get five back on that play. Fans have come prepared here today with their winter gear. The crowd has thinned significantly. Really can't blame them. They've been sitting out there in the elements. We're in the cozy confines of the Dunkin' Donuts broadcast booth here, Mark. Yes, I like my vantage point much better than being outside there in the cold. Third and 19 now. They give six yards to E.B. Token Hanks on that first down play. Got a new quarterback out there right now for Albany, and he goes to the air, but another flag is down. 
It's going to be a hold on Maine, I think. Quarterback is Jeff Undercuffler. Holding defense number one. Ten yard penalty. Automatic first down. Holding against Manny Patterson. Jeff Undercuffler, 6'5", 220 pounder. He is a true freshman from Burlington, New Jersey. Where's Burlington, New Jersey, Mark? It's down near Philadelphia, north northeast of Philly. Mark lives in Jersey. He's gonna get that Jersey attitude about him. <laughs> Tough guy. Not this one. <laughs> no more. Too old. Well, I never was tough, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Only when you were a black bear. All right, under Cuffler, the quarterback, hands it off. No, fake, throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Albany. Their first of the ball game. So Albany back on the boards. Extra point pending. Could make this an 11 point ball game. Black Bears reeling a bit here in this second half. We have ourselves the ball game. Yep. Again, another little slant pass, man, man to man coverage. He gets the inside leverage on him, and a pass delivered right on the numbers. And what a throw by a freshman yeah. coming coming in in this weather. Under under Cuffler, the true freshman coming into the ball game after the starting quarterback Vincent Testaverde injured, and then Brunson, the backup quarterback, taking that hit from Deshaun Stevens. They're going to go for two here. Brunson back into the ball game and the Black Bears will deny that two point conversion. Great play there by Darius Hart. 21 9 the Black Bears lead it. We'll take a break back with more fourth quarter action. There's the first touchdown of the afternoon for the Great Danes. For more than 168 years Bangor Savings Bank has stood by its employees customers, and communities. And we're not stopping now. We will be here for you. Today, and every day ahead. There's still time left in this year's building season, and Hammond Lumber Company is here to help. From free estimating and planning, to design and drafting services, and a wide variety of products, as well as complete home and garage packages, Hammond showrooms are open with CDC-recommended procedures in place. Or browse online and place your order by phone. Delivery is free within striking distance of any Hammond location statewide. Keep your project on schedule with help from Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. And the Black Bears will be looking to get something going offensively once again. Try to finish this game strong. Almost 12 minutes left to go. Ernest Edwards will receive the kickoff around the nine yard line. Across the 20, 25, up near the 30. Whistle blows, forward progress will likely take him to about the uh, 30 yard line. That's where the Black Bears will get things going in the snow here at Alphonse Stadium. Ernest Edwards last week at 196 yards receiving and this one so far six receptions for 114 yards of course the bulk of that yardage coming on the first offensive play of the ball game 77 yard strike from Ferguson to Ernest like Bear started strong great first quarter that has been their problem quarter but their strongest quarter here today Ramon Jefferson trying to get around that left end he will and he's got the first down. He just showed his speed right there. They were closing in on him as he got to the corner and he just turned on the Jets and found the sidelines. So the Bears move the chains. Good block by Ernest Edwards gets the corner and nice run. Just just what Maine needs. Yeah, Jefferson uh, finished up first half very strong. He was the uh, key ingredient in that final drive of the first half. Black Bears scoring their third touchdown. He's got it again here and he's going to pick up some more good yardage. A flag coming in. They take this nice pickup by Jefferson away and the penalties are beginning to 
accumulate for the Black Bears. Offense, number 82, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. Joe Harrisiniak went down to one knee on the sideline. You can see the frustration in his body language. Well, again, <laughs> you know, there again, nice play, another 10 yards. You're moving into Albany's territory, and you set back 10 yards by a holding penalty. And it's really just a matter of discipline. Black Bears now eight penalties for 80 yards. Here's Fitzpatrick with a carry, and he tries to hurdle a defender. We've seen him attempt that before as he tried to go up and over number 41, A.J. Missler. And now some pushing and shoving after the play. He loves to do Watch this. It. He loves to do this. Again, little counter play. Okay, gets upfield. <laughs> he thought the guy was going to go low. <laughs> low, exactly. He did not. And Fitzpatrick could not quite get over number 41. Here's second down. Good pickup for Maine there on first down after the penalty pass down. Field and is caught. And that's Andre Miller, the kid from Old Town, on the receiving end. The ball will be marked at the 23. What a catch, what a throw for the Black Bears. That was a great throw by Ferguson and an even better catch by Miller. Was this a one-handed catch? That was a one-hander. The defender has him covered. Terrific catch. Great to see a local kid come up big late in this one for the Black Bears. 9.50 left to go, loose football. Mishandled snap there by Chris Ferguson. He was able to regroup and pick up the pigskin there. Yeah, absolutely. Talking about local kids, you got Joe Pitt, uh, Fitzpatrick out of North Yarmouth, played at Chevris, another main boy. Gunnar Ducos, the right tackle, plays uh, played out of Oxford Hills, another main product. Nice to see these kids staying home, supporting the university. So it's going to be first down. Now check that second down and 13 after that mishandled snap loss of three yards. Now they go back to Miller and Miller breaks a tackle gets into the secondary and just tripped up. As Josh Wynn, defensive back for U Albany. I think he's got his left hand down around the ankles there of Miller. Tripping up Andre but another quick hitter good block by Belcher on the edge. And Albany's lucky that he was able to make a shoestring tackle. With the entry to Micah Wright, Andre Miller, a key figure now in this main offense, showing his abilities here late in this ball game. 8.38 left. Here's the pass to Devin Young. He advances the football to the five. Score here by the Black Bears would be huge. Absolutely. And you know, just keep doing what you're doing. You don't, they haven't been fancy on any of these plays right here. They've all been quick hitters, runs up the middle. Just, just keep it just like that. Clearly in the driver's seat in this ball game late, approaching the eight minute mark, up by 12. But a chance here to score late and also feel better about themselves. Heading into the waning moments here, heading into that big game next week against Towson. And a completion here as the pass goes to Belcher, and he returns the favor, fires it into the end zone, and the connection made there with Julian Dunn, and the Black Bears have scored for the first time here in the second half. Nice little trick play. Halfback option with Belcher, flips the option, and wide open, Dunn for the touchdown. Well, that's what you get with Drew Belcher, the former quarterback, taking the pitch there from Ferguson. He's used to rolling out to his right, and done wide open in the end zone. Here's a look from behind Kenny Doak in the snowflakes. Good snap, good hold, good kick, and the Black Bears now lead it 28 to nine. Little trickery here by Maine Gets them another score. Black Bears in control here on homecoming. What motivation?
motivates us at Casella? I want to help our customers recycle as much as possible. Because I care about the environment and how our company impacts our towns. And at Casella Organics, we find new uses for all sorts of materials. It's hard work. But I'm helping people every day. And that makes me feel like part of the community. A community I care about. So I do everything I can to sustain the resources of our environment. Casella, dependable, caring people, part of your community. Out here, if you have the will, you can lead the way with the all-new Fisher Easy V V Plow. Purpose built to provide industry-leading features, performance, and efficiency, just like the other V Plows in our lineup, but in a lightweight design that's ideal for businesses and homeowners using half-ton trucks. A strong yet versatile plow that handles the work and won't back down. The all-new Fisher Easy V V Plow, built for Fisher Nation. For more information, visit fisherplows.com. So with that last uh, touchdown pass by uh, Belcher, how many times do you think in the history of college football has a tight end thrown a touchdown pass to a tight end? Mm. Good question, Mark. Why don't you do the research before our next I game? was hoping one of our guys would do it for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Black Bears scoring their first points here in the second half, almost at the midway mark of this fourth quarter. Bears seeking their fourth conference win of the season against one loss. Have the 19 point lead. Kickoff by Doak. Here's the return by you all, but it's not a bad one. Getting it up to the 35 yard line is Dev Holmes for the Great Danes. This game brought to you by Quality Jewelers, Maine's official, in, official engagement jeweler. Solid performance here by the Black Bears. Stumbled a bit in the third quarter, especially with the penalties along with the turnover. Responding well in that last possession. There's Undercuffler. He's going deep. Manny Patterson on the coverage and the ball off the fingertips of the intended receiver down there. And that's going to be Donovan McDonald. Patterson slow to get to his feet. And now the training staff of the Black Bears will charge out onto the field to check on number one. Undercuffler has a wicked arm. Pretty strong yeah, arm he there. He sure does. Good attempt by McDonald, but could not come up with the football as you look into the Great Dane huddle along the far sideline with the timeout here due to the injury to Manny Patterson. He is on his feet as we get a different look here of this pass play. Patterson battling, a little hand fighting there with the intended receiver. No flag, incomplete pass. Looking at some of the numbers here to this point in the ball game. Another good outing for Ramon Jefferson, Mark. 16 carries here today, 85 yards. Last week, uh, average 5.7 yards per carry. He's got 5.2 yards per carry here today. Chris, Ferguson, uh, Chris Ferguson's number is solid, 21 for 30. He does have that one interception, but he's thrown for 244 yards. Another strong outing for Ernest Edwards. Six receptions for 114 yards. Of course, the long touchdown pass. Deshaun Stevens was having another great game defensively for the Black Bears before being disqualified due to the targeting penalty. So Maine's really offensively. They, they've played a solid game. A couple of penalties, the one mistake on the throw. But overall, they're, they're making their numbers, and that's what's important. Here's... EB Token Hanks with the carry for U Albany. And he'll pick up a body yard on that first down play. Second down and nine for U Albany. Nice play by Sheffield right there, coming up, making the tackle. Got a quick read. Oh. 
to Albany's going to finish up their season with a couple of home games against Delaware next week. They're at UNH on the 10th, and they'll play rival Stony Brook at home on the 17th. Here's a throw to the near sideline. Pass is incomplete. Fourth down and nine. You see the Great Danes schedule, of course, big loss last week at Towson. That's the Black Bears' next opponent. Towson putting out 56 points, of course, here at Maine today, and then Delaware, UNH, and Stony Brook to finish out the season. New Hampshire uh, winning on the road today at last look over Villanova. It's been a struggle this year for the Wildcats. That punt off the side of the foot, it will roll inside the 30, and It'll be touched down at the uh, 26, and that's where the Black Bears will get it going. All right, let's get to the scoring summary here. Mark, and right out of the gate, first offense of offensive play of the game. Chris Ferguson to the air, right down the middle of the field to Ernest Edwards, and Ernie does the rest. A 77-yard touchdown. Ferguson getting into the act again, this time on the ground. Bounces one out to the right side, powers his way into the end zone, and then it was Ramon Jefferson scoring late in that first half. He's had a solid game once again. Here's Undercuffler, the third string quarterback, getting UNH into the end zone, or UNH, U Albany into the end zone for the first time. And then the trick play here by the Black Bears, the pitch to Belcher, fires it to Julian Dunn in the end zone for the Black Bears' fourth touchdown of the afternoon. Here is Ramon Jefferson with another carry. That was a good looking carry there by number eight, showing some elusiveness and some power at the end. He has a terrific knack of hitting the line of scrimmage and finding a little space to the outside, bouncing it to the sideline and turning it up. He's got a good combination of speed and power. And he's getting close to a 100 yard game here. I mean, just taking their time, running some time off the clock. Approaching the six minute mark. Black Bears trying to salt this one away, keep everybody healthy, and continue to move the ball up the field. Jefferson, the call again. This time, not so much, but he does pick up three. You know, not much, but that was a dead play when he hit the line of scrimmage, and he, f again, just found that little. Little opening in the line of scrimmage and, and shot through it for three yards. Second and seven for Maine. Ferguson still out there for the Black Bears. Last game we did a few weeks ago against Villanova. Isaiah Robinson was the starting quarterback for the Black Bears. Ferguson was still working his way back. Jefferson getting the bulk of the work here late in this ball game. Fights his way for three more. Third down and three coming up for Maine. Another tough uh, three or four yards right there by Jefferson. They had him stop, but he kept his legs rolling. He got upfield for another three yards. Gonna get a break on this play. Joe Fitzpatrick into the ball game for the Black Bears. Snow falling here at Alphonse Stadium. Main letting the play clock run down. It's under 10 seconds. Current temperature here in the Orono Bangor area 38 degrees with relatively heavy snow snap falling. It. They do get the snap off. Hand off to Fitzpatrick. No opening on the left side of that main line. Good job there by the Albany defense. And after the whistle blew, some activity and a flag coming in. Now, if this is against the Black Bears, they have had a tough half in the uh, penalty column. Officials. I saw a black bear hit the ground at the very end of that play, so I wonder if maybe it might go the other way, but we'll see. Mark predicting a late After hit. The play, a sportsman like conduct, offense number 75. <laughs> After the play, a sportsman like conduct, defense 
Number 16, the penalties were all set. Third down. I was half Dang. right. Yeah, I was go. half right. I like being half right. Just missed the first right. half. <laughs> fourth down. Fourth down. So it's going to be fourth down for Maine. So here comes the uh, punt unit for the Black Bears. David Gelb, the uh, freshman from New Jersey, 5'11", 182. He's been doing the punting for the Black Bears. And now a whistle. Let's see what we got here. Looks like everything's okay now. Yep. Fourth and three up on the board. Got to have solid blocking on this punt right here. Make sure we get the ball away without any mistakes. Taking their time are the Black Bears as that clock continues to tick. Short kick running up on it is McDonald's. Calls for the fair catch at the 24 yard line, and that's where Albany will get things going. Get a scoring update here. UNH leading Villanova 31 to nothing. That game in the third quarter. Towson, an early lead against uh, Delaware. 3 nothing Towson. And James Madison, an early lead against Stony Brook, seven to nothing in that ball game. That's another big game. URI with a win over William and Mary. That game a final, 21 to 10. 28 to nine, our score. Albany with the football. They've scored nine points here in the second half. Pass down field, and it's going to be out of bounds. Off the hands of Catley Joseph. That's intended for Donovan McDonald. They do a good job. They actually shove the Albany receiver right out of bounds. Make sure he doesn't make the play. Yeah, Richard Carr cutting McDonald off at the pass there. Maine's still playing man defense. They get two deep safeties. Make sure to take anything that's uh, long, take that away. Under Cuffler, flushed out of the pocket, rolls to his right, looking downfield, doesn't see much, and fires it out of bounds. Good coverage there by the main defense once again. Yeah, it's nice when your defense can play as well as Maine's does. Keeps you in every ball game. Big challenge for Maine next week against that Housing team. They can put points up on the board quickly. Yeah, another long travel trip for Maine as well. It's not like the Black Bears aren't used to being on the road. No, they're racking up some miles. They should have that routine down pretty well. Here's a pass across the middle. It is caught, and Holmes out of bounds at the 28. So the clock continues to tick. Under Cuffler, again, the third string quarterback, first and second stringers have been injured in this game for U Albany against the Black Bears, Testaverde and Brunson. We have seen a little bit of Brunson. He took the hard hit from Stevens on the targeting call. Here's the punt by U Albany, and it's going to bound out of bounds. And the Black Bears will take it over. Uh, but both offensively and defensively, this is a great comeback game after last week. Yeah, very impressive uh, first half. Black Bears put everything together in that half. Stumbled a bit here in half number two, but had the big lead, had a cushion, and they are about to put away the Great Danes and send you Albany to an 0 and 5 record in the conference. And as we talk about Maine traveling, I just wonder what that bus ride's going to be back in the northeast, nor'easter. Oh boy, for Albany tonight. 
That won't be any fun, I can assure you. Yeah, it's about a seven, eight hour bus ride with a stop or two. I'm saying solid seven. And with the weather, they tack on another half hour. Straight up the gut go the Black Bears. Joe Fitzpatrick carrying the football there. And it's going to be a first down for me. See Andre Miller right there, number 82. Should look at the main sideline as well. Miller. And Drew Badillo talked about him in the pregame show. Kid from Old Town, Maine, just up the road. Played a key role for the Black Bears in this win. Absolutely. You know, again, getting back to Maine, doing what they had to do. The score was 21 to 9. Albany just scoring. Maine comes right down the field. They tack on that last touchdown to put the game out of reach for Albany. And no surprise here. Black Bears keeping it on the ground and keeping it in the hands of Fitzpatrick. It's across midfield. Joe picking up six yards on that play. Second down and four coming up. It's been a good year so far for the Black Bears. You could even say very good to this point, but plenty of work to do if the Black Bears want to play beyond November 17th. You know, just clean up with that. All they really have to do is just, really it's the penalties that have been uh, troublesome to them. Just got to clean that up and, and Maine will be okay. They play great defense. Their offense is solid. Uh, next week is a tough game against Towson, but uh, you know, Maine comes ready to play. Anything can happen. And you know it's over when the head coach takes his headset off. Good look at the main band. Let's not forget about the band. I always think of those young folks across the way from our position here in the press box, but they've been sitting out in this cold and now snow here at Alphonse Stadium today. But Black Bears in victory formation. And that should do it right there as the Black Bears will come on the field. Maine victorious here once again. Black Bears 3 and 0 here at Alphonse Stadium this year. They have one more home game left, the final game of the season. So they improve to 5 and 3 on the season and they are 4 and 1 in the CAA. 28 to 9 our final. Stay tuned. We'll come back and wrap things up from Alphonse Stadium. Black Bears pick up the win. Best way I could describe working with Ham and Lumber, our relationship is like working with a group of friends. Their service is excellent in the store. Uh, you walk in, there's always somebody there waiting to help you. Delivery, on-site help, whatever is needed, they're there for us. Aggressive on the pricing, they have all the materials and products we need. Their sales service is exceptional. They deliver everything when we expect it to be delivered. It always comes back to service with Ham and Lumber being the most important thing. 28 to 9 the final the Black Bears take home the victory. Let's send it down to the field. Andrew Badillo has the coach. Thanks a lot guys here with head coach Joe Harrisimiak after the 28 to 9 win over Albany. Joe the offense came a little out a little sluggish in the yep. third quarter but they picked it up in the fourth quarter. What did you see differently between the two quarters with your team? Yeah I think we just effectively ran the ball a little bit better late in the third early fourth and uh, you know, Ramon does a nice job, um, you know, making plays when they're not there. And certainly the old line kind of uh, was leaning on them toward the end and did a great job. And ultimately, it was a good team win. Did the weather affect anything in the second half? The snow picked it up, picked up. But did it affect really anything you were able to do on offense? Not really. I think because, you know, we were ahead, so we wanted to run the ball anyway. But, um, you know, I just think we, we deal with this stuff in practice. And it's something we talk about. And I think they did a great job today. Defense was phenomenal. Sean Stevens obviously goes out with mm -hmm. the with the hit on Brunson. Yep. And then also Charles Mitchell is out of this game with, it, with an injury. Yep. How proud are you of that black hole defense and how they shut down a really what is an explosive Albany offense? 
Yeah, did a great job. I mean, um, you know, Deshaun's was close. I don't know. I got, I got to see it, so we'll, we'll figure that one out. But, um, you know, they stepped up without Chuck. Oregon inside. Andrew Stevens, Skylar Bowman did a nice job. And ultimately, defense set the tone today, which was good. And, uh, you know, they got to keep playing like that, especially in November. And then Andre Miller, the hometown kid, stepping in for Micah Wright. Just w what can you say about his performance today? Made a few huge catches for you guys. Yeah, Andre's an incredible talent. You know, we, we wanted to recruit him out of high school. Uh, he took a path to get here, and um, we're just excited to have him. He's got an extreme amount of talent, and, and once he, you know, picks up on the offense a little bit more and more, you saw what he can do. And uh, you know, he's going to play a lot of football for us, and we're just happy to have him. Joe, thanks a lot. Congrats on the win. Thank you, guys. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Andrew. A solid effort by the Black Bears uh, here today as they pick up their fifth win overall. Black Bears now five and three. They improved to four and one in the CAA. Tough 2018 so far for U Albany. They're now two and six overall and zero oh and five in the conference. But a good way to head into that tough game against Towson next week, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. They did all the things necessary today to win. Just take it into next week. All right, that's going to do it again. The final main wins at 28 to 9. Main football is a presentation of Learfield. Don't miss our next broadcast when the Black Bear men's hockey team hosts UMass Lowell. That is Saturday, November 3rd at 7.30 p.m. Watch it live on WBII in Bangor, WPXT in Portland, and Fox College Sports. For Mark Coots, our producer and director, Jared Fieldson, and our entire PAC Network crew, I'm Jim Churchill saying good night from Orono.